oh, we're journalists, but we're never oh going to be held to any kind of accountability for anything we say, and we, that way we we're, we're, have job security for life. Fuck that. That just means you could be a hack and put out the worst game reviews on the planet, but it's an opinion, so it's protected. Fuck that bullshit. That's terrible. <sighs> Fuck that bullshit. That, I don't terrible. buy into that shit at all. You have to have some kind of criteria when you're reading a game, okay? Um, for me... <clears throat> What I like to do is a few things when I review a game that leads to a rating system. The first thing I like to do is to put myself into context as someone who maybe understands the context of a game and maybe is the fan of a series versus someone who's not. So, for example, yes, someone who's a huge about. fan of Street Fighter and has played Street Fighter since day one and plays Street Fighter competitively may think one thing about Street Fighter V while someone who is not a, a competitive player, is it Street Fighter, who doesn't care about the competitive scene, who is not a hardcore fan, but maybe casually plays fighting games, they may think something completely different about Street Fighter V. And what I want to do, I always strive <clears throat> to put myself into this, those situations and explain that in my review. Sometimes I even give two review scores so you understand. Now, Wait, obviously... That's so fucking asinine, though. A lot of cases where I can't do that. For example, if the very first Persona game I'm ever playing would be Persona 5, I can't say, well, as a huge fan of the Persona series, I rated this, and as not, I rated this. Can't do that. So you can't always do that, but I like when I can do that. <clears throat> being that now I've been an eight-year YouTuber, and I'm now entering year nine of being a YouTuber, <clears throat> it allows me to say, wow, I have so much experience under my belt that I can make these kind of, as knowing where the franchise has been versus being an outsider to the franchise, I can kind of do those dual reviews all the time, all right? Dual That's reviews. one factor when it comes into giving a numbered review. I have to understand your perspective, all right? Just because someone gives a game a high score doesn't mean the game is good for everyone. Maybe from their perspective as a fan of that series, it's a great game, all right? That's one thing, that, a criteria when it comes to scoring. Number two, yeah, there are objective things that I look for. How many hours of gameplay is a game going to be? How many quality hours of gameplay are there? Because even though a game may be 30 hours long, if 25 hours is repetitive, boring, grinding side content just for the sake of saying the game is longer and only 5 hours of the game are meaningful, then those 25 hours are basically worthless and you need to actually factor that into your score. Um, <clears throat> graphics, story, quality of audio, quality of all that stuff. You know what I mean? Gameplay. All that stuff is objectively factored into my score but audio i've never have you guys ever heard dsp talk about the audio of the fucking game when, when has he fucking done that when has he ever fucking talked about audio in the game unless he means music even then let's go let's just go to a random fucking uh you know just a random fucking video of dsps okay Let's go to let's go to his reviews, okay? Uh, Ko Gaming. We'll go to his most recent review. Uh, here we go. We'll watch. We'll we'll look at this one here. Phil here for Ko Gaming. What is up, everybody? Phil here, and welcome to Ko Gaming's first. He did it today because he had different headphones. Major video game review of 2017. Mm. You know, gamers worldwide have been intrigued by Resident Evil 7 Biohazard. No, but I'm talking about his reviews, not his fucking uh, demo called The Beginning Hour was released during E3 of 2016. A unique first-person perspective, being the first time this was ever used in the Resident Evil series, in addition to an emphasis on exploration and puzzle-solving rather than survival horror-style combat, really left gamers scratching their heads. Was this really what Resident Evil 7 is going to be? Because it is certainly nothing He looks like a fuck like in the, the webcam. ...has been in the past and is certainly nothing like the evolution of the game through Resident Evil's 4 through 6, which were more run-and-gun action-adventure games than true survival horror and so for over six months we've all been waiting um wait on um, what was this really what resident evil 7 is going to be because it is certainly nothing like this series has been in the past and is certainly nothing like the evolution of the game through resident evils 4 through 6 which were more run and gun oh, okay. action adventure right. games than true thought i heard him horror. say and something so, fucking stupid for over six for months we've there. all been waiting through multiple different versions of this demo that were released to find out exactly what the final version of the game was going to be the game finally released this week he did it for his Resident Evil 7 PSVR 
quote unquote comparison because a blind viewer asked about 3D audio. Okay. <laughs> Was that a joke or uh, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I just completed it, and I'm ready to share my thoughts on Resident Evil 7 Biohazard. Now, for clarification's sake, I just want to let you know I... I'm, I'm talking about his normal reviews. I'm not talking about a comparison, because technically that's different. But I'm talking, because he said in his fucking gay uh, Q&A video... Oh, audio is a factor in my reviews. So we'll see if he talks about audio in this review. You own PlayStation VR, and I did play Resident Evil 7 on my PS4, but I did not use VR for my first playthrough, and that's not what I'm reviewing in this game review. Reason being is because I found that the field of view with virtual reality is incredibly narrow and actually hinders the initial gameplay experience. I wanted to get the full breadth of the game without using... <laughs> <laughs> this is footage using PSVR. I didn't know by the fact that you have a fucking headset on in the fucking webcam. Thank you for, for you know, clarifying that, dude. I didn't know. I, I didn't know. VR for my this is footage using PSVR. Honestly, it's awful. I prefer to see what I'm doing. Well, you're sitting on the fucking couch, you fucking moron. First run Jesus. through, and also the graphics are dramatically downscaled when using virtual reality in order to get the frame rate necessary for the virtual reality effect to work. And I didn't want to give my viewer. I, I okay. By the way, I just want you guys to take a look at this fucking. Uh, uh, you can't really see it all too well, but the uh, the title reads uh, "Terrifying Return to Form: Resident Evil Seven Biohazard Review." Uh, how much fucking clickbait do you need? That is a fucking clickbaity title. A really fucking clickbaity title. Terrifying in fucking caps. You know, like... What the fuck? I'm just looking at all the related videos. So yeah. JC, the game's proper title is Resident Evil 7 Biohazard with a colon. It's bio, okay. Uh, Resident Evil, oh yeah, he fucked that up too, technically. He didn't even type it in really right. He typed it in super fucking assholey, like this. Watch. Hold on, not that. Resident Evil uh, 7 Biohazard. <laughs> JH, no. Um, clickbait searching for Resident Evil Seven Biohazard doesn't doesn't bring this review up anywhere. It's still clickbait, dude. You you can't say it isn't clickbait though. He has fucking terrifying, ter a terrifying return to form. Terrifying in fucking caps. Instead of like all these other normal people. With normal fucking channels. Resident Evil 7. Biohazard. Game review. That's it. <laughs> it's all you need. Look at this. Okay. All right. All right. Back to the fucking an inferior version of this game as the first initial run through now in the future i may actually do a vr run through of the game wait 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 <sighs> You know, I do own PlayStation VR, and I did play Resident Evil 7 on my PS4, but I did not use VR for my first playthrough, and that's not what I'm reviewing in this game review. Reason being is because I found that the field of view with virtual reality is incredibly narrow and actually hinders the initial gameplay experience. I wanted to get the full breadth of the game without using VR for my first run through, and also the graphics are dramatically downscaled when using virtual reality. Where is he getting this from? Didn't he just say he didn't fucking play it with virtual reality? Where the fuck is he getting it that it's a whole downgrade of fucking graphics because of it? 
he gets it from his ass. I don't understand that. Where the fuck is he getting this from? Or a lot of people. Probably a lot of people. He probably read a couple reviews on the fucking VR thing. Say, and then he saw, oh, people were saying in the chat, he's, you know, he played the demo with VR. The demo. The demo. He did it, he did it offline. Okay. Don't know if that's true or not. I don't know. He played the demo with VR. That's not the actual game, though. So that that doesn't really count. This is this is a review of Resident Evil Seven, Biohazard. <laughs> not not the demo. It looks like he's playing the demo, right? This is the I don't know. I haven't played this, but this right here, where he's using the footage for the PSVR, I think that's the demo. But that's him playing the fucking demo. Um of the game so. without using VR for my first run through and also the graphics are dramatically downscaled when using virtual reality in order to get the frame rate necessary for the virtual reality effect to work and I didn't want to give my viewers an inferior version of this game as the first initial run through now in the future I may actually do a VR maybe you should clean out your fucking stupid ass office maybe you should move your fucking PlayStation to an area where you can fucking use the VR headset you fuck Run through of the game, for but for me. now, this is just a review of the plain vanilla version on the PlayStation The 4. plain vanilla version. The story of Resident Evil 7 starts off with the protagonist Ethan receiving a mysterious video message from his estranged wife. Mia, his wife, has been missing for three Hila. years and was actually presumed dead by authorities, and this is the first that anyone's ever heard of her. This message tells Ethan to stay away, but also includes a cryptic address somewhere out in Louisiana, which Ethan is now compelled to locate and find. He wants to know what happened to his wife, and so, against all advice, he sets off for himself to find this mysterious location. Of course, in real life, this would make absolutely no sense. You'd probably notify the authorities, but being that this is a horror game, you're just gonna have to see Oh my fucking god. God. Why did he even why did he have to fucking even fucking mention that? He sets off for himself to find this mysterious location. Of course in real life this would make absolutely no sense. You'd probably notify the authorities. Like 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 in real life this doesn't make any sense. You probably notify the authorities. Like like <laughs> how much of a fucking ego do you have? Nice pause by the way. Look at that. Look at that fucking face up there. Uh, how much of a fucking ego do you need to fucking mention that to make yourself look like a fucking intelligent human being? Of course, it's a fucking game. Of course, it wouldn't happen in real life. Thanks for letting me know. You're you're really smart, dude. You're you're a fucking genius, dude. I didn't fucking know it was a video game. Like, Jesus. But being that this is a horror game, you're just gonna have to suspend your disbelief. The fuck Ethan was he doing? He shows up that? in the bayou and immediately starts running into some mysterious things. There's a van that seems to be completely abandoned. There's a mansion that's completely protected by a fence, and no one seems to be around. And so Ethan begins to kind of investigate the video game land. The main plot of the game. I won't spoil too much since the plot of this game is one of the major things you're going to enjoy, in my opinion. But it just keeps up that very creepy atmosphere that you saw in the beginning hour demo. You'll be investigating houses, guest houses, shacks, uh, dock sides, a big mansion. And then there's actually a couple other locations outside of this main location in Louisiana that you will investigate. I'm not going to really spoil too much about that, but just to let you know, there is a variety. It's not like you're just stuck inside the same house for the nine and a half hour run that it's probably going to take you to complete Resident Evil 7, and that's a good thing. Yes, there is going to be exploration, and yes, there actually is puzzle solving incredibly similar puzzle to that the original trilogy of Resident Evil games. You'll be looking for special keys items, plaques, and things that'll open up locked doors. You'll be looking for secret passages. There'll be puzzles that you need to solve to get items that are otherwise hidden. And so it really does have a major throwback feel to the original Resident Evil games. In addition, the game spoils does have boss. some combat and gunplay. <laughs> and yeah, it's Even very different than anything else stuff. in the series because it's from a per first person perspective. But I will tell you this, there is a limited amount of ammo in the game. 
and yes it could be very tense if you don't have healing items and enough ammo at one time when you're taking on a gauntlet of enemies that seem to come out of nowhere it really can be just suspenseful and disheartening and scary as hell there's jump scares but it's also that feeling of uneasiness that you had in that original trilogy of, trilogy of resident evil games where you never knew what was around the next corner you didn't know if you had enough ammo or supplies to take it on it's back in full force in resident evil 7 and that's a great thing now, outside of just Ethan and his wife Mia, the main antagonists of the game are the Blake family. That's right, that Southern American down-home group. Now, I, I'm gonna guess, uh, I think I saw this on Twitter, he got the fucking name of the family wrong. I don't know their name, but pretty sure it's not the Blake family. I'm gonna look at chat. Okay, somebody said Baker, and I think that's what it is. The Baker family uh, can't even be, can't even take the fucking time to fucking know the fucking thing. Uh, and spoiled the family. I'm going to guess that's a big part of the, the fucking game uh, from what I've seen. Dang. Now, outside of just Ethan and his wife Mia, the main antagonists of the game are the Blake family. That's right, that Southern American down-home group of creepy-looking relatives that we've seen in all the promotional materials up to this point in the game. It's obviously there's something wrong with the Blakes here. There's not just crazy, there's something maybe even supernatural or undermining in them that's making them do absolutely crazy things. Supernatural? Oh my fucking god. Thanks for the spoilers, dude wrong with the Blakes here. There's not just crazy, there's something maybe even supernatural or undermining in them that's making them do absolutely crazy things, sometimes possibly even against their will, as sometimes they'll seem to be almost friendly, and then other times they're coming after you with a bloodthirsty rage to want to rip your head off. So it's pretty nuts that at any time you could see one of this family just show up and scare the bejesus out of you, you don't know when you're going to have to fight them or run from them, and again, it's kind of that fight or flight Confusion what the fuck? To the suspense and the creepy spoilers! A lot of the time, fucking spoilers, dude. Supposed to be upright, fighting someone or just running from them, and it's cool to have that feeling of tenseness, maybe leading to you replaying the same segment. Spoilers, to probably. To I think to to pass it, I'm gonna guess. That's pretty cool. That's spoilers. There's, There's spoilers there. The game, yeah, they are kind of generic, although there are different variations of them. They're called the molded because. Take a look at them, they look like they're made of mold. And yes, they are kind of interesting. They move similarly to some of the enemies previous in the Resident Evil franchise, including the Ouroboros enemies from some of the other outings, including Resident Evil Revelations. But they are a little bit different. Yes, you can actually deal more damage to them if you actually try to aim for their limbs or their head. And yeah, they kind of walk in a weird way that tends to dodge bullets naturally, making it kind of difficult to even take down one of the weaker ones in the game, so it takes a little bit of practice with the first person shooting combat in order to get the knack of how to actually hit them properly in order to take them out. Oh, fuck! A lot of the times it may just behoove you to run by them or find a way around them rather than taking- It behooves you. Behooves you on head on because you're going to expend so much ammo it's not worth it so yeah you do have the blake family as the big baddies of the, the game blake. but there's also other enemies as well two things make a return in resident evil 7 that have been a staple of the franchise for quite some time first is inventory management especially for the first few hours of this game you're going to be finding yourself juggling items in and out of item boxes in safe rooms to try to make sure that you have the right items on you at all times maybe you found a key but you haven't found the door for the key yet maybe you found one item that you can combine but you don't have the other thing to combine it with yet and since you want to take as much ammo or the proper items with you at a certain period of time inventory management is a big return to Resident Evil 7. It really hasn't been that much of a concern in the last few games, but in this one it very much is. Also, there are several big time boss fights in the game. Now, I'm purposely not going to spoil these for you because these are some of the best moments of Resident Evil 7. A lot of the times they come out of nowhere and they're shocking at how interesting and different and scary they can be. So I'm not going to spoil, but I'll just let you know there's a few of them in there that are pretty damned awesome. Now, one thing that's new to the series is gold. Not to say that there hasn't been gore, gore in the past, but this is just kind of the kind of spoilers. Watch, watch, watch. Gore that you've seen in movies like the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. There's going to be hands chopped off, people getting stabbed, and you're going to be like, oh my god, this game is not 
for the squeamish. Just to forewarn you, if maybe you were okay with the previous Resident Evil games because they didn't seem like realistic horror, having this game being in the first person perspective and having people actively attack you is a whole other ball game and something new to the franchise entirely. The graphics are a little bit here and there. What I mean by that is that they're not very consistent throughout the entire game. Whenever you're dealing with characters like the Blake family or Mia, it looks almost photorealistic. This is obviously a really good job of motion capture translated into a game very well in the modern era. But looking at the stream chat very greatly. Sometimes you'll walk into a new area and your breath will be taken away at how creepy it is. Look at the Who isn't even paying attention to the fucking game at that point? He was looking at the fucking chat. Is that they're not Watch very this consistent. Shit throughout the entire game. Whenever you're dealing with characters like the Blake family or Mia, it looks almost photorealistic. This is obviously a really good job of motion looking at the chat. translated into Stop a looking at the chat. Well modern era. Stop looking but at the chat. The locations in the game can vary greatly. Sometimes you'll walk into a <laughs> that area, whole clip is looking at the fucking chat. How creepy it is. Look at the lighting effects of things that are reflecting off of the walls. And then other times, it just isn't very impressive at all. In fact, right at the beginning of the game, I took a look into a rock to my right that had almost no textures or any kind of detail on it, and I felt like I was playing a game on the Nintendo 3DS. I get the feeling the reason is because they really dumbed down the graphics of this game to have a smaller field of view and to not be too taxing on the engine so that it could actually work properly with the PlayStation VR. So if anything, the one major trade-off of Resident Evil 7 is that the graphics aren't necessarily the best you've ever seen because because they wanted this to work with virtual reality, as long as you're not looking for the most groundbreakingly graphically achieving game ever, this really shouldn't be an issue. The story of Resident Evil 7 is pretty much the best part of it in my opinion. At first you have absolutely no idea what's going on with the Blakes and all of these monsters that are out to get you, but the over Blakes. the course of the game, through the actions of the family, through other occurrences, and of course through the traditional pieces of paper, notebooks, diaries, and text logs that you'll find strewn throughout the locations in the game, you'll be reading a lot and finding out what exactly happened here and how this all came to pass. Now I'm not going to spoil any of it because it is pretty much the best part of the game, but rest assured that by the end not only are there twists and revelations about it, but it also has a final resolution unlike a lot of modern games in this era where they kind of just make now i'm not going to spoil anything about it but just you know let me talk about you know what you'll be looking for and what kind of small hints they're going to make at you figure it out for yourself Resident Evil 7 has a satisfying ending and actually ties in with the mainstream Resident Evil franchise, which is something that a lot of people were questioning. Gee, would it have a tie to the characters from the previous games? And the answer I have to tell you is yes, it does, which is- Spoilers! 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 Here, let me tell you about how it, how it ties into the rest of the fucking series. No spoilers, dude. This guy doesn't know how to fucking review anything. Very much a part of the mainstream Resident Evil plotline, and that's awesome. So, I'm not going to spoil any of the plot points in this review. You fucking you idiot. You, you fuck. You fuck. You fucking idiot. It's like, it's like, and I'll let you guys know it has a satisfying ending, and it ties in with all the other Resident Evil games, and da 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 da. But I'm not going to spoil anything. Trust me on this fact. I am very skeptical when it you comes to the You fucking idiot. Story. I loved the story of Resident Evil 7, and I think that you will too. Not anymore! You fucking spoiled the whole fucking game! You fuck! And so with all these positives, including awesome responsive first-person shooter gameplay, the return to form with classic survival horror elements like limited inventory space and resource management, as well as never knowing what's around that next corner leading to a feeling of uneasiness and suspense at all times, a unique cast of interesting characters, boss fights, a great story, Obviously, all this adds together to be an awesome gaming experience, but what's not so great about Resident Evil 7? Well, first off, this has to be said. If you have been a fan of the Resident Evil franchise recently, including games like Resident Evil Revelations or Resident Evil 5 or 6, and then you play Resident Evil 7, you might be like, what happened here? Because this game honestly feels nothing like those previous games whatsoever. They totally changed up the feel of the game to be a more survival horror kind of deal rather than a running gun action adventure shooter which really is what Resident Evil 6 was at its core so if you're a hardcore fan of the last few games in the franchise you may be
survival horror kind of deal, rather than a run-and-gun action-adventure shooter, which really is what Resident Evil 6 was at its core. So if you're a hardcore fan of the the feel of the game to be a more survival horror kind of deal rather than a running gun action adventure shooter which really is what resident evil 6 was at its core so if you're a hardcore fan of the last he fucking bumped his mic feel of the game to be a more survival is he talking with his fucking hands gun action adventure shooter, even when he's off really camera resident evil 6 was at its core Jesus. so if you're a hardcore fan of the last few games in the franchise you may be very disappointed by seven because they went for something more classic and it <laughs> phil flails his arms even when he's off camera holy shit okay if you're in that bow Number two, I do have to admit that this game feels a little bit on the shorter side. Now, not to say that I don't feel the pacing is good, because I think the pacing is excellent. There's never a part in the game that feels like it's dragging on, or it's boring, or that you're doing... Despite being paced well, Resident Evil 7 is only 9.5 hours long. That could be a tough sell for a fully priced game in 2017. It's not a fucking free-roaming multiplayer co-op game dude Jesus I don't I don't know whenever anybody ever talks about how long a fucking game is and oh it's 2017 it should be longer than 10 hours dude like who gives a fuck that depends what else is in the fucking game holy shit dude <laughs> it's like 9.5 hours is a fine that's like okay this is like complaining about how long a fucking movie is. Seriously. Like, why would you, like, 9.5 hours long. That's, that's some, I don't, I don't think that's something wrong for a game in 2017 or any fucking year. Like, seriously. You're telling me it doesn't have a bunch of filler bullshit? Yeah. This is the dude who fucking complains about games giving him filler shit to do. Like in Mafia 3 and shit like that. And he get, and he doesn't like it. And then he complains about how Resident Evil 7 is only 9.5 hours long. Get the fuck out of here. Todd in Battlefield gets away with four hours because both have multiplayer. True. Uh... So, because COD and Battlefield have replayability, but like, like I'm saying, dude, this is like, you know, watching a movie, uh, like, this is like watching, uh, Lord of the Rings, uh, like, you know, two towers or something like that. And it's a couple hours, you know, long or whatever, depending what version you get. And... This is like complaining. It's a, oh, it's only two hours long. Uh, you know, they needed to add more. Um, so yeah, you know, like, fuck you. Fuck, I, I fucking hate, uh, people complaining about how long a fucking game lasts. I mean, if the game's fucking shitty, then I guess that's fine, but it's like, seriously, who gives a fuck? It's like complaining about how long a fucking movie is. Like, oh, that movie was only, you know, an hour and 50 minutes long. Whatever. Something that you wish you could just get to the next part. Every part of the game feels well-paced and excellent. So the direction of this game was done very well. But the game's around nine and a half hours long. And in this modern day and era, a lot of us are going to have a hard time swallowing a $60 or whatever full retail price tag it is in your region for a game that you're going to play within a couple sessions and you're probably going to be done with forever. There really is. <laughs> oh my God. I, I'm sure, I'm sure people in the, you know, when the first fucking Mario came out, I was like, oh, the game's on. Uh, probably not. But uh, imagine if DSP was, you know around back then when the very first Mario game came out or, you know, Super Mario 3 came out. Oh, it's only two hours long! You wouldn't, you're not gonna go back and replay this, why would ya? I, I don't go back and replay video games. I have to move on. Da 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 da. Like, get the fuck out of here. Seriously. It's like, this is why this motherfucker is not a gamer. He is not, he's not like you, he's not like me, at all. He doesn't play games. 
Well, he does, but he doesn't go back and play games like a normal gamer. He just, when, <laughs> it's really funny because he's like talking about how uh, the viewer is going to, you know, play it and uh, and then just kind of like, oh, well, I, I finished that game. Time to move on. Like, he's never going to go back. You know, the person is never going to go back to this game ever. You know, they'll, it'll just be sitting there collecting fucking dust. They'll never go back to play unless it's Overwatch. Unless it's Overwatch. True. But Overwatch is like, he, Overwatch is a fucking multiplayer game. He hasn't gone back to fucking Battlefield or Call of Duty. <laughs> he doesn't even bother to invest time and enjoy them. Yes, true. He rushes through the games. This is a game that he ended up fucking playing uh, a couple days in. He fucking finished the game in a fucking week or so. And the whole fucking month, he was like, Oh, you know, I have to, I have to figure out what to, what to fill up the whole month. Cause when Resident Evil 7 comes out, I'm going to be busy. I'm going to be super busy. Finishes the fucking game in a week or less than a fucking week. even probably less than a week. So, so he doesn't go back to play games. Uh, he's not a real gamer. Um, he, games to him are just like some one fucking one off shit or whatever. Like, seriously. Like, real gamers go back and they replay shit because they fucking can. Alright? What the fuck is this? He should have played Undertale. Fuck. Whatever. I've replayed my favorite game so many times that I learn new stuff almost every time. Phil won't. <clears throat> so, he's not a real gamer. Following a $60 or whatever full retail price tag it is in your region for a game that you're going to play within a couple sessions and you're probably going to be done with forever. There really forever. isn't much replayability whatsoever in Resident Evil 7, although there no? are some collectibles in the game that you could go back and try to find. There is an unlockable madhouse mode that makes it so that there are absolutely no checkpoints whatsoever in the game and you're relying on the original save points just like you used to in the original Resident Evil games. Remember those typewriters and ink ribbons? Yeah, that mechanic returns in the madhouse difficulty of the game yeah so that maybe has a little bit of replayability and there's one critical choice that you make during the plot of the game that could lead to a variation on the ending although I've heard the variation is not a big one and really does not warrant a whole second playthrough to see again nine what the fuck was that during the plot of the game that could lead to a variation on the ending although I've heard the variation is not a big one and really does not warrant a whole second playthrough to see Again, nine and a half hours for full retail price could be a hard the fuck thing was to that? swallow. The thing is, fucking that if snort. they made the game a little bit longer, maybe it would have overstayed its welcome, and maybe it would have been one of those games where it has one of those segments that's more drawn out, and it feels like it just is too much for what it wants to be. Wait, maybe what? For, it would be. Again, nine and a half hours for full retail price could be a hard thing to swallow. The thing is. That if they made the game a little bit longer, maybe it would have overstayed its welcome. And maybe it would have been one of those games where it has one of those segments that's more drawn out and it feels like... Now he's like, now he's like, you know, thinking about it. Like, oh, maybe if it was longer, it would get boring after a while. <laughs> it just is too much for what it wants wow. to be. Maybe for survival horror, that 10 hour kind of hot spot is what you should aim for. I don't know because I've really never played a super long survival horror game. I think the longest one I've ever really played was Alien Isolation a few years back. Alien Isolation. around 13 to 15 hours. And that one also had a few spots where maybe near the end felt like it was dragging on a bit. So maybe this is the perfect length. But I know there's going to be people who are going to have issue with a game that only lasts nine and a half hours and like you pay you? full retail price for. Especially because, yeah, of course it's Capcom, and I know you were expecting this, there's DLC coming. 
and it's coming sooner rather than later. In fact, one week after the release of the game, there's already a DLC pack that'll be. Okay, he's acting like this isn't a big fucking. This is this is this is him acting like it's a big fucking surprise that a game doesn't have DLC planned in the making. Seriously. Like, I don't understand. Like, seriously. Like, games? Like, do you really want to play a fucking game that doesn't have DLC coming out? Or, you know, and you have to wait a long-ass fucking time for that DLC to come out event eventually or never or whatever. So you never go back to the fucking game, you know? Uh... Anyways, so, like, you know, games have fucking DLC, dude. It's been that way for a long-ass fucking time. Forever. It's it's like it's been, it's like DLC, like day one DLC and, uh, you know, you know, uh, companies planning DLC uh, beforehand and having it come out after launch. Uh, that isn't new. Um, this isn't new shit, all right? So, hold on. What the fuck is this? Fucking green screen. Get the fuck off me. You fuck. Anyways. This whole thing, the reason why we watch this whole fucking thing, by the way. Now the good news is that I've done some research and it seems the DLC packs for Resident Evil After doing a little research seven are more kind of periphery content and more supplemental. They're not gonna reveal anything. <laughs> it's kinda of, okay. Uh, Yin made a good point. Jackie, it's coming from the guy that pays for cosmetic DLC in Overwatch that doesn't do anything except skin changes. And something you can fucking unlock in the game, by the way. He buys it. So... You were critical about the plot of the game whatsoever. It's more like if you really enjoyed the gameplay of the game, you can go back and maybe do a, a prequel kind of scenario for an hour where you're maybe trying to run away from the Blake family. It seems like supplemental, non-critical plot expansion. But how Capcom still has not learned is baffling. Shut the fuck up, dude. DLC is not new! It's not new! It's been, like, dude, Jesus Christ, dude. Like, you guys remember when day one DLC was a big fucking deal? JC, this is the guy who keeps buying re-releases when he could get the originals for cheaper. Are you talking about me buying the fucking Assassin's Creed thing? Or are you talking about Phil? Because I don't even fucking know. Like, oh, like Dead Rising. Okay. All right. Sorry. I didn't see that. Like Dead Rising. Okay. I'm talking about him. Okay. <laughs> um... I, yeah, I guess, but this guy bought Uncharted, remastered, and never played it. Okay, Dab, that is uh, that is a good point. He did? Really? Wow. Okay. This guy, okay. Uh, fuck DLC, Street Fighter, been doing this shit, and he'll always keep kissing his at, its ass. Um, uh, even the game that he's kissing the ass of right now, like right now, he's kissing the fucking game's ass. Injustice 2. Uh, Injustice 2 is going to have day one DLC. They have pre-order DLC. Uh, pre-order now, and you can play as Dark Side, coincidentally. Uh, 
so he's going he's kissing Injustice 2's ass about fucking Dia about you know oh it's a it's another wrong game of love it's gonna have day one DLC it has pre-order DLC so quit bitching about fucking DLC Injustice 2 has an ultimate edition for a hundred dollars which I believe DSP bought I'm pretty sure yeah and he's probably gonna buy it Breezy, I believe he did buy it already. I think he's publicly said that he's buying the Ultimate Edition. So. And stuff like that. It doesn't seem like it's going to be anything that if you miss out on it, oh no, you missed out on the full experience of the game. It does seem like it's going to be completely extra and not necessary to play. But again, you might have issue with Capcom nickel and diming us for more content, especially when the main game was only nine and a half hours long. Why the hell are they already selling DLC? That's kind of ridiculous. So. Lots of positives tied in to very small negatives leads to Resident Evil 7 being a re true return to the original form of the survival horror formula of the series and overall a pretty damned good game. And so all factors considered, I score Resident Evil 7 as a, a seven, 9 a out nine of 10, out of the 10. first great game of 2017. The first great game of 2017. Uh, you guys remember uh, just a second ago, maybe not a second ago, uh, 14 minutes ago when I was looking at this video. Um, Graphics, story, quality of audio, quality of all that stuff. You know what? I quality of audio. Gameplay. All that stuff is objectively factored into my score. But really? Where's the fucking audio review? You fuck? Huh? Okay. So don't. So don't say you factor fucking audio in it. Unless it's like really fucking shitty audio where it's like, you know, absolutely fucking shitty. Uh, you know, you're never going to critique audio. So, and by the way, he never said anything about the soundtrack in Resident Evil 7. Uh, and I'm sure the fucking game has one. And it probably makes the game a whole lot fucking better. So, um... No audio critique, nothing, no mention about the fucking soundtrack or anything like that. So, uh, no audio critiquing, technically. <clears throat> There's always going to be subjective, right? Did you like the story or not? Is this the kind of game that has enough gameplay for your personal tastes? And that's where the subjective comes in. Okay, he says this like a fucking cocksucker. What a fucking dickhead. Listen to him. Listen to how he says this. He says this with his fucking nose pointed in the fucking air. He's so high on his own fucking ego. <laughs> he has to talk about subjective. My subjective reviews. Suck my dick. Like, get the fuck out of here, dude. You fucking fuck. Subjective, right? Did you like the story or not? Is this the kind of game that has enough gameplay for your personal tastes? And that's where the subjective comes in. He has such a fucking ego. <sighs> He's, yeah, that's the word I was looking for again. A pretentious fuck! Fucking pretentious piece of shit. I strive to hold myself to a standard where there's a combination of objective standards and subjective standards. I don't even think, uh, uh, like red letter media. I don't think red letter media really, um, uses, I don't think they, I don't think they use review scores unless it's like, I actually, I don't think they use review scores at all. If somebody can, uh, uh, disprove that I'd, I'd like to know I don't think they do though I'm pretty sure they don't red letter media I don't think uses any fucking review scores for their reviews they just talk about the fucking movie and what they thought there you go without spoilers by the way you know until the very you know until they say oh spoilers okay so there you go Hold on Holy shit, the fucking thing. Done. Okay. So. There's while also factoring in what perspective I'm coming from when I review the game. 
But last but not least, one of the things almost no game reviewer does, all right, including game editors, <clears throat> if you're an editor for a gaming news media outlet, it's their actual fucking, it's in their job description to do this, and they don't do it properly. <laughs> what you should do, if you're a game reviewer, is score games compared to everything else that you've played recently. <laughs> what the fuck? That is the stupidest fucking thing I've ever heard. Okay. So what you should do, if you're a game reviewer, is score games compared to everything else that you've played recently. <laughs> that is the dumbest fucking thing I've ever heard. So if I played the Assassin's Creed 2 or the Assassin's Creed Remaster and I played Lego Lego uh Lego Hobbit or some shit like that, I should compare the two? They're nothing alike. That is the stupidest fucking thing I have ever fucking heard. Yeah, so I need to compare an RP. Let's compare Final Fantasy uh, 15 to Call of Duty. No. Get the fuck out of here. Get the fuck out of here. That is, that is the dumbest fucking thing I've ever heard. Seriously. What the fuck? Let's hear that one more fucking time. Do it properly. Snort. What you should do, if you're a game reviewer, is score games compared to everything else that you've played recently. Okay? So, for example, I'll give you a perfect example. Here. Okay, alright. Alright. Okay. Years and years ago, I rated Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 as my... Okay, okay, alright, okay. Alright, let's go back a couple seconds, because he said something key, very fucking key, to what he's going to be talking about in just a few moments. Properly. What you should do, if you're a game reviewer, is score games compared to everything else that you've played recently. Viewer, is score games compared to everything else that you've played recently. All right. Years and years ago, everything else that you've played recently. What you should do, if you're a game reviewer. Is score games compared to everything else that you've played recently, viewer? Is score games compared to everything else that you've played recently, okay, okay. viewer? Is score games compared to everything else that you've played recently, okay? So, for example, I'll give you a perfect example here. All right. Years and years ago. Recently! Not years and years ago! You fuck! Fucking idiot. Jesus. It's like, everything else that you've played recently. Everything else that you play recently. Years ago, I played Modern Warfare 2. You fucking idiot. You fucking idiot. I rated Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 as my best game of that year. That was so long ago, right? A million years ago. Today we scoff at Call of Duty and say it's garbage, it's overrated crap. Back then, Modern Warfare 2 gave a robust and unique and fun and gripping single-player campaign. Why are we talking about a <laughs> recently equals 10 year in DSP's, in DSP's brain? So that's not recently. Why are we even talking about Modern Warfare 2? What does this have... Like, I... Like, this isn't recent. Why are we talking about Modern Warfare 2? Why do I give a fuck about a game that came out years ago? It came out a long ass fucking time ago. Uh, Modern Warfare 2 didn't just fucking come out, all right? You fucking idiot. Um, why are we even talking about this? Combined with co-op online gameplay, a ton of robust online gameplay modes, robust amazing groundbreaking graphics, Great controls, great audio, everything. Great audio. You didn't fucking talk about the audio back then, you fuck. It was on another level. Now, there were other games at the time that were also great, but... Oh, he bumped his fucking cowboy hat. Online gameplay mode. He's been flailing his arms way too fucking much. He, bumped, he almost bumped off his fucking cowboy hat. 
amazing groundbreaking graphics, great controls, great audio, everything. It was on another level. Now, there were other games at the time that were also great. <laughs> I don't know why that's funny, modes, but it is. Amazing groundbreaking graphics, <laughs> great controls, great... Because it, it, like, it, like, he's not even... He doesn't even do this. He does this. And, like, hits it from the fucking back. Audio, everything. It was on another level. Now, there were other games at the time that were also... <laughs> <laughs> it's like his arm, like... <laughs> his arm, he can't control his arms. So, it, like, it, like, just goes, like... And like hits his head, like hits his, hits the back of a hat. <laughs> That's a good emote, dude. <laughs> Milady, Milady. <laughs> okay, enough of that. Great, but for me, for the games that I had played that year, that was the best game I felt out of all the ones that I had played. It was the best one, and I rated it as such. Okay. Okay. I a lot of shit for that. <clears throat> but what I think people don't realize is that for me, for the games that I had played, I felt that was the best one. Did I give it 10 out of 10 in my rating score? No. But I gave it a pretty high score. If I remember correctly, I think I gave it like a 9 or a little bit above a 9 or something like that. So pretty much a fucking 10. You fuck. Um, because I really did feel that it was the best out of everything that I compared it to that I had played recently. Today, would I say... Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 is a 9 out of 10 and one of the best overall first-person shooters ever? No. You want to know why I would say that? Because I've played other ones. I've played 5, 6, 7 more years of shooters that have advanced everything. So over time, a score that you give in a review could change or could degrade based on the modern advances and other things coming out. Okay. My God. God. That makes no fucking sense. Okay, so what fucking retard here is trying to say is that uh if it's if you've played other first person shooter games uh, okay, all right. Let's take my, he, let's take his example here. Uh, Modern Warfare 2, he's like saying, oh, I, I gave it like a 9.5 or whatever. Uh, and then years pass by. Uh, years since uh, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 came out, the games uh, improved on certain stuff, da 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 years and years pass, okay? Now we're talking about like Infinite Warfare. So he gives Infinite Warfare a 9.5 and Modern Warfare back in like, uh, I forget what year it came out. Uh, I'm just going to say a fucking year that I think it came out, like uh, uh, 2005 or whatever. I don't care. 2005. So it's now 2000 fucking 16. All right. 11 years. Okay. 11 years. All right. Right. 11 years. <laughs> 11 years since I'm, I'm right. Okay. All right. That was just a guess. It's actually 2005. Okay. All right. 11 years ago, you know, Modern Warfare 2 came out. Uh, now Modern Warfare 2 is at a lower score. It's like a 1 or something. Because, uh, he reviewed it, like, 12 years, sorry. 12 years ago. Alright, um, uh, whatever. I'm, I'm not doing math right now. But, you know what I mean. Uh, so, um, <laughs> so now I'm getting, now I'm getting, uh, okay, fuck. Okay, so the game came out 12 years ago or whatever. And now has a lower review score because he decided to change his fucking mind on... Oh, it's a shitty game now. It's a shitty game now. It, it sucks dick. Well, yeah. Because it came out 12 fucking years ago. It's like... It's like... It's like... And anyways, what fucking aspect? Like, that doesn't make any fucking sense. Like... At all. Like... Like, a game, okay, all right, Super Mario 64. All right, I want everybody to put their own personal uh, review score of Super Mario 64, all right? But <laughs> yeah, just do your fucking scores, all right? What do you think the game is at, okay? What's your personal score for that game? Oi, oi. Any fucking score. Seven. Somebody said a seven. Six out of ten. Eight. 
Super Mario 64, 11 out of 10, best game ever. Phil could have pseudo... Okay. Uh, uh, Banjo I like Banjo Kazooie more. Okay. 7.5, 10. 9 out of 10. Uh, unfinished game due to no space. Okay. Um, never played it. It's 20. It's 20. Super Spartas, right? It's 2017. It's only a 4 out of 10. It's 4 out of 10. So that game that came out years ago. So since more Mario games have come out and improved certain things, that game is now shitty because more Mario games came out and improved on certain things. That doesn't make any fucking sense at all. And that's and Zhao said and Zhao said that and that's the score I would give it when it came out. So, oh, and Modern Warfare Two came out in two thousand nine. Are you sure about that? I just got a fact check that I was right. It's two thousand five, March twenty second, two thousand five. Look at on look at on the uh, look at on the Wikipedia. Okay, all right. So, for a game that came out years ago. It's now a shitty game because more more of the same game came out. That doesn't make any fucking sense at all. That's like that's like saying, "Oh, more Halo games came out and Halo 3, I'll give Halo 3 like an 8 out of 10." Well, now it's, you know, le- years later, Halo 5 comes out. Uh and Halo Halo 3 is a shitty fucking game. Halo 3 is like now a, a 3 out of 10 for me, all right? Horrible fucking game. That doesn't make any fucking sense. Officially announced on February 11th, 2009, the game was released worldwide, November 10, 2009. Space Ninja, did you fucking lie to me? Halo 3 in 2007, easily a 9 out of 10. Like, I I think Halo 3 is a fun fucking game. I love going back to playing Halo, all right? I love going back to play Halo 3, Halo ODST, and reach or whatever but for him to say oh uh now now he had now years pass or whatever that game has lower score because newer games are out and the newer games are better no like that doesn't make any fucking sense that's so fucking ass backwards you know like mgs1 is almost 20 years old and it's still 10 out of 10 (laughs) Like seriously, uh, when when game publishers or whatever, uh, when they put the reviews on the fucking box, all right. I don't have a I don't have a game art thing to show you or whatever, anything like that. But when they put like awards and shit on the fucking box, the awards stay on the fucking box, and they mean the game was good. In whatever year he got, they got those fucking awards. Like, The Witcher, Witcher 3 or whatever. I think that was one of, like, the biggest, biggest awarded games or nominated games of all fucking time or whatever, you know. Got shit, hun- shit hundred tons of award- awards and shit like that. Um, so, now it's, like, a couple years later. Uh, those awards mean nothing. Uh, the game is shit now because Witcher 4 came out or some shit like that. That's so fucking dumb. It's like, it's like, they got the fucking awards when the game came out. So it means it was a good game back then, and it's probably still a fucking good game. But you're a fucking idiot. I, I don't know. I'm gonna move on, because you all know this is fucking stupid. This is the stupidest fucking thing for anybody to fucking do, and for somebody to fucking, oh, oh, suggest to fucking reviews. Oh, you, uh, you know, um, uh, you like, you like Modern Warfare 2? Back when it fucking came out, well, you're wrong. That game is a ten. That game is a one out of ten for me. All right, I changed my mind. You can't fucking do that. That's cheating. It's like, of course, it's not gonna be the. It's not gonna be the same game it was years ago when it fucking came out. All right, Uncle Death Saint, telling me to move on. Uh, you guys get the fucking point. Uh, it's just he's a fucking idiot. Sorry. Well, here's a perfect example. Right? Right now, I just played Resident Evil 7. Yeah. I loved it. I thought it was a great game. I thought that it combined classic survival horror with modernized gameplay mechanics like a first-person shooter mechanic, good graphics, and good story that kept you on the grip of your seat. 
everything was good about it, but it was only 9.5 hours long. I still gave it a 9 out of 10. I really okay. liked the game. All right. Okay. What if in six months, Outlast 2 comes out? Now, Outlast 2 is 14 hours long, has better graphics and a better story than Resident Evil 7. Okay. okay. Um, does that mean that I'm going to give Outlast 2, for example, a 9.5? No. Because in six months, there may be another game that came out that's like this and another game that came out that's like this. And what you should do is look at all the games recently that you're playing and say in comparison to the other games that are out right now. If you're a gamer who has to go to this... Okay, uh, Uncle Death is saying Phil could have a pseudo pseudo-phetadrine -feta addiction. I hope I said that right. I wanted to say pseudo -phetamine for some reason. pseudo -phetadrine addiction. Judging from his latest house tour video. Go to the bathroom part and you can see the drugs. I'll check that out in a second. I hope I said that right. <laughs> Imagine all of Phil's gout medicine. <laughs> all right. Or with just enough money to buy one game. All right. What game is better overall bang for your buck when it comes to all the factors you consider in a review? That's how I rate and score my games. <clears throat> a lot of editors and a lot of reviewers in the mainstream media never do that what they just say is well it has these good things these bad things subjectively i think this therefore here's the number score and i disagree with that completely i actually think i think my girlfriend's actually coming home so i'm gonna close the door shut oh my god all right oh i don't want to i don't want to stay on this part for for fucking forever but it's just he says the stupidest fucking shit i've ever fucking heard uh he, that's what a review is, right? Like, I'm so fucking blown away by the fucking idiocy of this dude. Like, oh my god, like... Ah, oh, the game, the game came out, da-da-da-da-da, I'm not gonna give it da-da-da-da-da. And, uh, the people who review the games for mainstream media are wrong because they say, oh, this is good about the game, this is bad about the game, and uh, and this is my opinion on it, or whatever. And here's a review score. That's what a fucking review is. You fucking idiot. Disturber with my talking loudly. But I completely Wish you would just fucking that, leave. That philosophy, okay? I think you need to actively compare, because how can you say? Just think of it this way. <laughs> Wait, what game series are we talking about? He's talking... Oh, never mind. You're talking in the fucking chat, right? I think that's what you are. <laughs> How can you say Uncharted 4 is a 9.5 out of 10? Doom is a 9.5 out of 10. But then you read the actual reviews that someone wrote, mm -hmm. and they said far more positive things about Uncharted 4 <clears throat> than they said about Doom. Now, but what the fuck?! <laughs> This dude is so fucking stupid. I want to fucking kill myself. I really do. I want to fucking kill myself. Like, seriously. They're totally different fucking games! This fucking dude. So, how could you do that? By the way, this is hypothetical. They're both outstanding games, and either one could be picked as a game of the year for last year. This is totally hypothetical. Okay. But I've seen reviews <clears throat> where it's like negative, 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 negative. Rating score nine out of ten. What? How could? Okay. All right. Well, he just. It's really funny. It's really funny when he does shit like this. He says, oh, I've seen positive reviews about games like Uncharted 4 and Doom and all that. And then other games, I won't, I won't mention what games so you guys can look it up and fact check my fucking fat ass. Uh, negative, 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 Okay? All right? Where's the fucking proof? What games are you talking about? Seriously. Negative, 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 negative. Hypothetical. But I've seen reviews <laughs> where it's like negative, 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 neg
Well, they're both outstanding games, and either one could be picked as a, as a score. Nine out of ten last year. This is totally hypothetical. But negative, 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 negative. Negative, 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 negative. Negative, 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 negative. Negative, 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 negative. Negative, 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 uh, I can make negative into a hard techno beat. Do that, dude. That's awesome. <laughs> tells me is that there's no rating scale at all. How could you have a game? Because then they have another game that they rated. Positive, 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 positive. Oh, oh my god, it's doing positive. Oh my god, now we gotta do this. Positive, positive, only one. Positive, positive, Cummings. And you rated it almost perfect. Because then they have another game that they rated positive, 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 positive. Po me is that there's no rating scale at all. Positive, positive, only positive, positive, only one negative. Nine out of ten. Because then they have another game that they rated positive, positive. Then they have positive, 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 positive. They have another game that they rated positive, 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 only one negative. Nine out of ten. How I can't. I can't do it that well on this one. Sorry. Just logically, <laughs> factually, that can't happen. Do it. Do it. Do it. Uh, do it. Space Ninja and do it like positive negative, like the battery thing. Like do a positive thing and do like slash negative or whatever. That'd be badass. <laughs> a logical human would say that's not correct. But again, they hide behind their tenet of. Well, reviews are just an opinion. Because it's just an opinion, you can say anything you want in a game review, and it's correct no matter what. Bullshit! It is you do the, the same fucking thing. And or the editor to make sure that game reviews are scaled properly. You have to look subjectively and objectively at everything that people submit to you as a game review and say, well, this guy said a bunch of negatives about the game. This guy said there was only one negative. This game just objectively is probably going to be rated higher than this one. But they don't I'm do that. I'm not even paying attention They're right now. They're fucking hacks. And that's what pisses me off. They're fucking hacks! Not like me! about these mainstream games yeah you know what and you know it's really funny phil does this phil did this a couple months ago what was the game he did it uh i think it was uh the last guard between the last guardian and dead rising 4 i believe it was he loved dead rising 4 gave it a lower score than a game that he didn't like which was the last guardian this dude's a hack this dude's a fraud! This dude's a hack! A hack reviewer! I, I'm calling him out, he's a fucking hack! Seriously. Get the fuck out. Their job, their full salary, 100% of the profit they make at their job is to make sure that, that what they write is legitimate, and then they come up with all these game scores that make no fucking sense. So you end up with games that are just kind of meh, that get high-ass scores, you end up with games that actually are a much more enjoyable experience than maybe another game, but it has a few shortcomings, and it gets rated way down here, because they don't fucking compare the games against each other. Oh That's God. not right. That is so... F uh, once again, that is just the stupidest fucking thing ever. I hope this thing ends like right now because i still i don't want to fucking talk about this anymore i'm not even gonna pause so, it until the next fucking question actually it may be tough yeah it's tough comparing apples to oranges i'll be honest if i'm comparing uncharted 4 to street fighter 5 to uh 
Fallout 4. It would be pretty hard for me to say this game is definitively better than this game is definitively worse than this game because they're all three different kinds of genres. But guess what? If your job is to be a mainstream gaming journalist and it's your job to put out pro quality reviews, you have to do the hard work. You can't just say, oh, well, it's an opinion so it could be anything and it can't be wrong. Fuck that. That's He's such a cop out, and that's called. Baby. Oh, I don't actually want to do hard work today. I just want to play a game and then throw any willy dilly opinion on a piece of fucking paper or type anything up for a website and have no actual leg legitification or, uh, excuse me, <clears throat> justification or legitimate reasoning behind what you put on there. Bullshit. That's stupid. That's dumb. That's just such a cop out, and I hate that shit. 100% fucking hate it. All right, I said I wasn't going to pause this, but this guy is talking about hard work. You got to do the hard work for your video game reviews, dude. The fuck are you talking about, dude? Seriously. Who the fuck are you talking about? Seriously. You do not fucking work. Get the fuck out. Okay. All right. So there you go. That's what I do to help scale my games and my game reviews. Great uh, to know. One or two more questions that we'll take. Great to know. Now I know why it's always fucking shitty. Break. Next question is from Victor Tryhard. He says, Phil, uh, if you could use a time machine to phone call yourself five years ago, what would you say to your younger self? Don't. Don't let that motherfucking scumbag Jackie Chin let you make uh, stream bumpers for you. All right? Don't do it. Don't don't put it on your fucking videos, dude. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> holy shit! You'd snort. <laughs> it's a good the good point, Space Ninja. He would snort. First of all, I mean, there's a lot of things I would do. First of all, I would probably obviously say all the things about finances. Don't spend money on stupid shit like statues because the money ain't gonna last. Right? That's number one. Don't spend money on frivolous stuff at all because the money ain't going to last. And it don't don't buy anything frivolous at all. <laughs> Good luck telling yourself that, dude. Didn't. Who knew? It could have. My money could have exponentially skyrocketed or could have tanked. It hasn't really done either. My money has kind of gone down at a small slope consistently. <laughs> okay. Um, <clears throat> but if I had known that, I probably would have saved every penny I could have. You know? Honestly, I probably... Don't buy a BMW, you fuck. Honestly, would have not, I'll be honest here, bothered kind of going on some of the expensive trips I went on. Like, some of those trips that I went to, some of those conventions and stuff, were they nice to go to? Yeah. But they never panned out to really anything too positive Sorry. for me. And they were really, I mean, thousands of dollars. And I'll say this again, because some people apparently don't hear me. I paid for everything on those trips. Whenever we went to a convention, I paid for everyone's plane tickets. I paid for the hotels. I paid for the transportation. That was all me. So I love it when people say, oh, Phil was a cheapskate. Uh, I paid for everything. I paid everyone's way everywhere we went. So I don't know what the fuck people are talking about. They like to you are a fucking cheapskate, dude. You fucking bought a BMW in front of your friends and you didn't fucking pay them to help you make your fucking videos. You fuck. You are a cheapskate, you piece of shit. Get the fuck out of here. Shit up to make them look better. But I paid for everything all the time. So, every trip we went on, I was dumping several thousand dollars, if not more, for everything. Snort. And it really didn't pan out. It was fun. You pig. But it really didn't pan out to anything that, like, made me a lot of money for YouTube. It didn't really benefit the business that much. I thought maybe long-term it would, and it ended up it didn't. So, in that regard, eh, maybe I kind of wouldn't have spent money on that. Um, <clears throat> certainly... One thing that I would have done, which I thought I had done, would cover my bases when it comes to business relationships. And what I mean by that is mixing friendship and business always kind of leads to problems. And oh, I was very wary about loud this. Enough, sorry. I'll be honest with everyone. When I was starting out with YouTube, I had known about what had happened with Screw Attack. Many of you may not know what happened with Screw Attack. ScrewAttack.com, all right, before they even were ScrewAttack.com, they were a group of friends and gamers who wanted to make gameplay videos, reviews, all kinds of fun, creative stuff for the internet. They were very successful, but as they were trying to change the business and expand and do all this stuff, there was a major disagreement and dissension between the ranks. It was, uh, 
Oh, God. Uh, Stuttering Craig and Handsome Tom. They were the two figureheads of the business. They were the two main guys involved. And there were all these other people with them. But they were the two big guys who basically were in charge. The two of them ended up having major business disagreements. They completely destroyed their friendship. Didn't even were even friends anymore. Separated. Tom went off to do his own thing. While Craig went off to keep doing Screw Attack. And it's kind of sad. Because these are two guys who we saw on camera for years who were friends. Right? And... They had apparently never up front talked about f concretely settling business arrangements, ended up having a business disagree disagreement and lost that friendship. Does that sound familiar to anyone? Because that's pretty much exactly what happened to me. For me, it's a little bit different. Because for me, when I started with YouTube, I wasn't intending on doing YouTube as a business ever. I had started on YouTube as a hobby. I wasn't intending to ever make money doing it. It was just something as a silly side thing. I would go to a tournament and record. I would record myself swearing at, at a silly game, you know? And then when I ended up losing my job and I had nothing to fall back on, then I started doing YouTube as a job and all of a sudden it exploded as this great profitable thing. And I said, I'm gonna bring in all my friends into it. Let's have people come over and play games with me constantly and go to tournaments and do co-op and do all these events and let's do creative series together. And I kind of saw it as a fun social thing that people could all have fun together and make money together at the same time. I didn't necessarily see it as business. Sadly, now I know some people saw it as business rather than us just kind of getting together to have fun. Dude, you would always... Oh my fucking god. Alright, okay. Well, we're gonna have to get into fucking business now. Because now he's fucked with the wrong dude. Tonight, see Jackie Chin. Fight, Dark Side Phil, one on one, mano y mano. This fucking dude, seriously, this this fucking dude. Alright. <clears throat> the guys that kept the whole fucking money. What a piece of fucking shit. Alright. This fucking dude, this fucking lying piece of fuck, all right? That's really, really where it went wrong. Now, now, sadly, now I know some people saw it as business, fun together and make money together at the same time. I didn't necessarily see it as business. Sadly, now I know some people saw it as business. <laughs> Somebody make a fucking anime thing of this. This is so fucking gay, though, but. Go up and do all these events and let's do creative series together. And I kind of saw it as a fun social thing that people could all have fun together and make money together at the same time. I didn't necessarily see it as business. Sadly, now I know some people saw it as. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> That's so fucking gay. Alright, no. They did not say it as business, dude. All you wanted to fucking do was make fucking videos all the time. That was... The, and I can believe that, dude. Because that's all it is now! All you want to do is make fucking videos all the goddamn time. Um... Like, it... I'm sure you've all you all know about the fucking uh uh I don't under from February third. When when was this? Oh, that was yesterday. Hmm. Funny. Uh very funny. Uh yeah, it's like he wants to keep bringing this up, I see. Yeah. And it's a cash grab, probably, most likely. <laughs> um, this whole fucking ask the king is a fucking cash grab, to be honest. Um, but uh, so, what was I? What was I talking about? Serious question: Would you endure the Rambo Howard video? Yeah, I, I would. I would watch it. Uh, I've act. I kind of want to go fucking watch it. You know, play it through right now. Uh, he's fucking talking about him. Uh, but I'm trying to, like, just kind of, like, keep it easy or anything like that. So I just kind of, like, uh, so I don't have to watch, like, an hour-long fucking video along with this one. But, um, anyways. So we make an agreement. 
which will be basically half of the month, half of the month's co-op income. So what happens is he takes out taxes from that amount um, and cuts it in half, right? I get half of that. But for instance, like if it's March and we do videos in March, I will get a percentage of what was made in March that does not include residuals like for months coming up. Like, for instance, if those videos make more money in April or or, or uh, June or July, okay? Like, that doesn't include that. So whatever was made in April for that month, that's what I would get. It does not include streams or whatever other money comes in, right? Yeah. This will out for a little while. Again, it's not exactly 50% if you throw it out there, but... So, so Phil... Phil's trying to say, oh, John and Rambo were only in into fucking uh, making money and shit like that. Uh, he didn't even make money off of, like, any of his other videos. Only the videos that he was in. So, Phil, get the fuck out of here. This goes on for a little while. Then he says to me, Machinima isn't sending me reports anymore. So I have no idea. I have no idea of the, the amount of money that we're making on the co-op. I have no way of figuring it out. So I can, I can no longer figure out this percentage that we agreed on. So I basically just go, okay, listen. Throw me $100 every time I come down. Okay? And the way I come to this number is because round trip is about two and a half hours of driving. Right? I'm there the entire day. And uh, I have to buy a meal at some point. So give me a hundred bucks to kind of cover my expense. You also have to consider, you know, these are days like I'm, I'm not going to work because my job, and I'm, in, I'm an independent contractor. So I'm not going to work these days. So if you really do the math, uh, with gas and food and uh, wear and tear in your car, you know, a hundred dollars every time you come, you're not exactly profiting there. And, in, and including not going to uh, working at a job which will actually make you more money than, than this, you know. Yep. So just to flat out say you got 50%, it's, uh, it's far from true. It's far from the truth there. Like, it's ha I guess it's half truth. It's a half truth. Is that what you would say? Yeah, it's a half truth. You know? <laughs> um, oh my God. So when people want to throw their stuff out there, man, all like you went to conventions and uh, we paid for things. Again, like you go to conventions, you got to take time from work. Which is, I'm not getting paid for work. Um, and we went to conventions, so he's got a, an injury. He has a back injury. So I would go and I would carry things. I would uh, film things. Uh, I did all the driving, as you, as you know. <laughs> oh! Uh, oh! Really okay! All right! All right, you fucking piece of shit! I see how it is. Yeah, okay. All right. Let's listen back to this just a second ago. Job, and I had nothing to fall back on. Then I started doing YouTube as a job, and all of a sudden it exploded as this great profitable thing. And I said, I'm going to bring in all my friends into it. Hold on. Well, concretely settling business arrangements, ended up having a business disagree disagreement and lost that friendship. Does that sound familiar to anyone? Because that's pretty much exactly what happened to me. For me, it's a little bit different. Because for me, when I started with YouTube, I wasn't intending on doing YouTube as a business ever. I had started on YouTube as a hobby. I wasn't hobby. Going to ever make money doing it. It was just... Actually, actually, to be honest, in the last fucking part, DSP... Hold on. ...this arrangement ended up having a business disagree disagreement and lost that friendship. Does that sound familiar to anyone? Because that's pretty much exactly what happened to me. For me, it's a little bit different. Because for me, when I started with YouTube, I wasn't intending on doing YouTube as a business ever. I had started on YouTube as a hobby. I wasn't intending to ever hobby. make money doing it. It was just something as a silly side thing. I would go to a tournament and record. I would record myself swearing at, at a silly game, you know? And then... I paid for I everything. Exactly, Yin. He paid for everything. He drove everywhere. He paid for everything. I had nothing to fall back. And then, and then Rambo, Ra Rambo, Rambo is over here fucking saying, oh, he got the gout. 
He got the motherfucking Joe gout. And Joe would carry things. I would uh, film things. Uh, I did all the driving. He did all the driving. And Phil is trying to say he did all the driving. I think Phil's full of shit. Rambo had to fucking drive for him because he had the fucking back problems. He even admitted it, that he couldn't fucking drive anywhere because he had back problems. So, Phil's the fucking liar in this case. Fuck you, Phil. Uh, Fuck you and your snorts, bitch. Then I started doing YouTube as a job, and all of a sudden it exploded. It's a big profitable thing. And Rob, I said, I'm going to bring in all my friends into it. Let's have people come over and play games with me constantly and go to tournaments and do co op and do all these events and let's do creative series oh, together. Shit. And I kind of saw it as a fun social thing that people could all have fun together. Let's and make get money social. Together at the same time. I didn't necessarily see it as let's business. Get social. Sadly, now I know some people saw it as business rather than us just kind of getting together to have fun and that's really really where it went wrong now again i don't know what happened with the screw attack people but the same thing pretty much happened with me and that sucks I fuck you bitch and said, all right if i'm gonna even talk a dollar of money to anyone with anything we're gonna do together Pew. we're gonna outline it up front because by not outlining it up front it led to the chaos to happen later Although I'll be honest, <laughs> oh like shit! I'm holding a gun to his head. One thing that I will say, I'm holding a gun to his head, dude. Wow! Woo! Woo! I concretely, <laughs> both in face discussions and through email, outlined to them when we started that. I would consider maybe doing something monetary down the line, paying oh for their God. work. And they told me up front, they didn't want any. You money. held a gun to my head, dude. Oh my God. We want our YouTube channel to blow up. So with this Project 7, with all the work we're putting oh, in, we're going to hope to get plugs and everything so people will come over and check out our stuff. Okay? And that was it. Now, six months, eight months down the line, after they put all this work into oh, Project shit. 7, they weren't seeing wow, what, they were, what they were They weren't getting what they wanted out of it. And then they decided they didn't oh, want to shit, do Project dude, 7 anymore. What the fuck? But they weren't really transparent oh, with me about shit. it. And basically, oh, shit. Oh, fuck! Told everyone under the sun about this except for me that they would have liked Oh, fuck, well, dude! Fuck you, dude! So, fuck no you, bitch! Fuck you! No oh, now, shit! Fuck. Answering this question from Get Mr. Tryhard, I know <laughs> it's bullshit. Fuck? When people tell you they probably don't want money, it's bullshit. <laughs> Bottom line is everyone hold, wants money. Hold, Bottom line is everyone wants money. <laughs> Brightside Viking will screenshot money. this. <laughs> see someone oh my who's God. making out, they want some of that. Even if regardless if they are a big piece of it or not, they want some of that. All right? And I get that. And I should have sat down with everyone who is involved with all the projects okay, I did right. ahead of okay. time. And said, listen. Hold on, hold on, hold on, we're gonna work on this together, hold on, hold on, and it becomes profitable. Hold on, hold on. Here's how we're all split. The Here you go. There's your emote. Well, There's your emote, dude. I Get it. Out, <laughs> and it didn't work out like that. That sucks. It sucks that I lost those friendships because of bullshit behind the scenes that I was never notified of until I'd already moved across the country. But that's life, I guess. You know. Um, so that being said, um, uh, post post the uh, picture. I, mean, I would have told myself. Post the picture. Is that a Makarov PM? Friend, no, this is a business. Walter PPK Jane Bond gun, bitch. Um, yeah. Okay, I all right, sorry. I would have told myself to just post the, post the link to the, uh, the as picture. Uptight and defensive Someone. As I have been over the I years. I want to see it. It'll be funny. I already said this publicly before, but I do feel that my initial reaction to when people were doing things like this is how you do Uncle Death, it's a fucking cap like gun? That. It's not a I'm fucking really Capcom, sure. dude. Back then, I didn't understand that a lot of it was meant to just be silly and be fun, versus now a lot of them aren't. A lot of them are malicious and evil and just fucking trying to rip me a new asshole and make me look like a horrible person so that no one will ever go to my YouTube channel <laughs> ever. <laughs> Back then they weren't necessarily oh, that like that shit. whatsoever. That's great. I almost wish that it's I had a score no gun. It's not a fucking totally score gun games. either. And I'll, I, it doesn't I'll squirt. Fuck. Snippets or parts of them. You hear this? That's a sound of a real um, life and gun. That, a real life gun. About, show us ammunition. Show us ammunition, dude. Really I haven't gotten any ammunition. All right. It's all upstairs. Out. This is just this is just a a, a one off thing. All right. It's just just you one off. You aim. You shoot. You fire. Okay, dude. You aim. You shoot. You fire. Right. Rather than. Oh, I'm so angry. Phil's gonna flip his shit 
when he sees this. Shoot the camera. <laughs> wow, dude. Okay. It's not a fucking Capcom, dude. Do you see the fucking orange tip? No. No. Show us the magazine. Uh... If down here, reacted, it's down oh, here. Fuck there you go. Woo! Woo! Okay, all right, sorry, guys. Happened. You're right. Let's all laugh together. People making fucking memes about it. I loved them. I retweeted mm. them. I made them my goddamn profile on places. Memes. It was a lot of fun. I rolled with it. And Post that picture that, to fate, it didn't uh, Twitter really too. Didn't affect me at all. In fact, if anything, I, I painted it black. No, it comes slurred. black. Oh, God, said, this is actually oh, a really, a really nice. Uh, I had an increase. It, it's a, it's a BB gun. It's a CO2 one, in popularity or for a and it's got like the CO2 tank in here or whatever. So this well, is actually like, a really I nice one though. With a punch, right? Uh, because it's metal. That, it's like the hard metal shit or whatever. I mean, this, this part's like plastic. The part where you take it off or whatever. But the rest of it's like metal, and it's like it's pretty heavy. It's got a nice weight to it. So and it like I don't know. It's really nice. I actually like it because it's like the James Bond gun. I really am. Or whatever. It's pretty cool. It's pretty Shit, cool. Like, I, mean, uh, I probably would have warned myself to be a hell of a lot more careful when it comes to fan art and uh, stuff like that because that's I don't know, like the revolver here, the revolver. It's got like uh, it's got the CO2 tank down here, but it isn't. It, this is plastic. This is all fucking plastic. That is why, and it's like really light too now, because because I the only time I ever I'm, I'm on stream now is I, I hold this one. This one's this one's heavier. You know, this one's heavier than this one. This one's lighter. You know that channel. Literally is doing half as good as it did two years Woo! ago. Woo! Copyright It's bullshit. Um, <laughs> that's probably the thing. So Revolver Jack. I probably say number one. If I could call myself, but like with past, this one, since the CO2 tanks, tanks in the bottom or whatever, stuff, it's, it's heavier on the so bottom, so it, it it gives um, you that good spin. Be careful or whatever. when you involve your friends. So it's like business, hash the natural. Or time or this one's kind of like weird. But but this one, this one, I can get the the gun, the gun spin or whatever, kind of. But, but this one's really cool. I like this one. Uh, I think I got it like for. Fun of you and stuff like that. Laugh with it rather than get angry at it. I don't know. It was like thirty bucks, I think maybe thirty or forty. I don't know, but I saw it. It was pretty cool. There you go. Those are the four things I probably would have told past me. All right. One more. It's pretty cool. I saw it. It was awesome. I thought it was gonna be lighter too when I got it, but so final question here. Um, this one is from. It's pretty cool. It's heavy. Oh, it's metal question. too. No, it actually not. feels like it's a real gun. No, never mind. Here it is. So I could probably get shot on stream if I get says, swatted or what something. What is the like first that. anime that you remember watching? Have there Fuck been anime! In your lifetime that you think you're good enough to recommend to people new to anime. Um, the first anime I ever watched was Sailor Moon. The only Bro, you're fucking gay! Because it was the first one that was ever on United States broadcast television in the morning. They put it in the time slot normally when a children's cartoon would be on. And I saw. I was like, "What the shit is this?" And then, uh, I think after that it was original Dragon Ball, followed by Dragon Ball Z. Again, same reasonings, as it was put on as a broadcast cartoon in the mornings. <clears throat> I think, believe this was when I was in late elementary school to early high school. Um... I'm trying to remember... Uh, Jackie, you should get a, a G11 BB gun. Honestly, anime did not become mainstream in the United States until the late 90s. I, but I feel like John Wick really now with this gun. I feel like John Wick. When DVDs, when DVDs became prominent. Um, and quite honestly, it didn't hit its stride until Cartoon Network started... Do you think I have a better chance with this than DSP's ads? I could just be like, BAM! Bam, home bam, 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 and then I can take out the revolver and be like, I could be like, bam, 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 or whatever, or I can like taunt him too, like, like, um, Dragon Ball Z it's is high noon. For people in and you're like, bam, 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 out of all the people who watch anime, I'm probably the vast minority. I don't know much at all compared to others. Wow, fuck furries, too. I am not an informed person to ask a question. He would call like his that. gated okay. security. All right. More like That's his gayed security because they're gay. And yes, the Twitter Jackie, are, are you coming. talking to me? So, don't go anywhere. Are you talking to me, Thanks bitch. for watching, everyone. Who are you talking to me? Right around the corner. Who are you talking to me? Okay. All right. I spit on the fucking monitor.
All right, everyone. All right, everyone. Part three, the conclusion of Ask the King 4. The conclusion uh, of Ask the King. February 2nd, 2017. <clears throat> Just a quick reminder, since this is the final part, I'll remind you how you can get your questions answered on the next episode, which will take place sometime in April. All right. You can either post up your questions on the kingofhate.com forums. <clears throat> Positive I got from streaming on YouTube for two years was that I could stream at 1080p and 60 frames per second. Twitch, you can't do that. You just cannot. It will look like shit if you try to do that on Twitch. Choppy and terrible. I don't understand where all the money went. All this money that supposedly was invested in them from Amazon, why didn't they use it to improve their business? I don't know. I can't answer these questions. All right. So, with all the years people begging me to come back to Twitch, I said I could only come back if I could still stream at their low quality, but I Jake find Jim, a way this at the same time to record videos for YouTube in a higher I quality. <laughs> I tried doing this with the, the old program OBS, it's the program I was using for streaming and capturing. It doesn't work. I would have to open two windows of it to do it, and honestly, when I tried it, it wouldn't work. My whole computer would crap out. It wouldn't be able to handle it. So I couldn't do it. All of a sudden, people said, well, did you realize they just added the capability to this other new program, OBS Studio, where you can stream at one quality and record at another? So I messed with it. What I messed with it, here's what I found. Yes, it works to some extent, okay? I can stream at those shitty limitations that Twitch has, so that's what I've been doing. And, you know, some people have noticed my stream quality has significantly degraded since I streamed on YouTube. So that's you. the price I pay for and streaming your on Twitch because their limitations are terrible. I can't believe they haven't upped them yet. It's ridiculous. Um, that being said, okay, I have found that I can record at higher quality for YouTube, but I can't do full 1080p and 60 frames per second. I tried it with games such as Overwatch and... Modern Warfare Remastered, and when I tried it, the videos were very choppy. Not pixelated, they looked smooth, but the choppy, it, the frame rate was terrible. It was very choppy. So basically, my computer <laughs> yes, cannot handle recording at those solutions. <laughs> so there's a solution, but it's a compromise, all right? I can either record, while streaming on Twitch, I can either record at full 1080p resolution, but only 30 frames per second. Or I can record at 720p resolution lower, but at full 60 frames per second. So here's where it works and it doesn't. Like, for example, when I first started streaming on Twitch, I was playing Watch Dogs 2 and I was playing Final Fantasy 15. Those were the two games that I was kind of balancing at the time, right? Both of those games ran at 30 frames per second. So I captured it at 1080p, 30 frames per second, and they looked just as good as they always did on YouTube. There was no degrading quality at all because I was recording at this higher resolution and I didn't need 60 frames per second because the games didn't run at them, right? So that worked out perfectly, no problems. But then, <clears throat> when I started doing my year-end multiplayer event with patrons... And also, as I played more Overwatch, and I knew there was going to be other games that had 60 frames per second coming up, like Resident Evil 7, I knew there was going to be an issue. Because those games run at 60, and if you don't record them at 60 frames, they look choppy, because to the native eye, you're used to seeing them running at the full 60 frames per second, right? So I knew that I had a choice to make. And I actually polled a few times on Twitter and on pre-stream and stuff, and I said, would you rather see a lower frame rate for these games and the higher resolution, or would you rather see the better frame rate? And overwhelmingly, the response that I got was frame rate. Most people were actually saying, we don't watch videos at 1080p. When we do, our computers can barely handle it, or our mobile devices don't look good. We usually watch around 720p anyway. So do 720p in 60 frames. So, excuse me, the last few times that I did <clears throat> multiplayer games with Overwatch, the whole playthrough of Dark Souls, the Redemption run, because guess what? That game doesn't even run at 1080p. That game only runs at 720p regardless. So that whole playthrough was at 720. And then Resident Evil 7, I recorded at 720p, but full 60 frames per second. All the videos I've been putting out recently are 720p. So admittedly, right, people might say, oh man, I, you know, I used to watch full screen on my monitor, now it looks a little bit more fuzzy. Yeah, because that was the trade-off I made. If I didn't do that... For example, when I played Resident Evil 7, it would have looked way lower frame rate. And people would have might have said, wow, Phil's playthrough looks inferior to other people's who, you know, everyone kind of recorded <laughs> it at 60. Phil only did 30. What's up with that? 
So that's kind of the trade-off. Same thing right now with Yakuza 0. This is the first Yakuza game ever that actually runs fully. The entire game runs at 60 frames per second. So I'm recording at 60 and only recording at 70 I'm not even interested in this right now. So that I can get the full 60 frames, okay? Um, it is what it is. That's the trade-off that I'm dealing with. Um... This is boring. There's nothing talk. I can do about it. I don't even know if upgrading my PC would allow me to do this, to stream at the, what Twitch wants, but then do full 1080p 60 frames per second at the same time. It could be a limitation with the OBS software. I don't know what it is, but that's the deal. Maybe so you're I fucking idiot. To anyone who loved watching my videos in 1080p. The good news is, <clears throat> moving forward, games that still run at 30 frames per second, I will be recording at 1080p, but if there's a game that runs at a higher frame rate, I need to go down to 720. Okay? Fair enough. For most people, it's probably not even an issue. Most no. people probably still don't watch videos at 1080p, but I'm just saying that's what's going on right now. All right? <clears throat> oh, the next question <clears throat> from Wingmaster19. Phil, has there ever been anywhere you wanted to go for vacation? For uh, he, he suggests Japan or Mexico. Um, Here's the realistic vacation places I'd like to go, and then I'll tell you the pipe dreams, all right? Jesus. Realistically, California... Oregon or Canada. Why are those realistic? Places he could go. <laughs> He's over there. Oregon isn't probably that far away. Canada isn't that far away. Because they're close to us. And why would he want to go to fucking Canada? You know if there's really anything there that's too different from America? So because the travel cost would not be very high, especially now that we live on the West Coast. And there's a lot of fun stuff there. California, you've got L.A. with Hollywood and all the tourism and the Walk of Fame, and the movie studios and the theme parks and everything. Oregon has a ton of beautiful nature stuff, but also has Portland, which is this big hipster-like city. That's all gay. Kinds of That's niche, stuff dude. And to do there for tourism. Canada. I mean, Canada has super high tourism. Their tourism has been increasing massively. They've got great cities like, I think the one that we would probably go to is Vancouver, which had the Winter Olympics a few years back. So they already have this giant city that was built up for massive tourism. And it's there and ready to go. And it's really easy to get a passport just to go right to Can uh, Canada and back. Uh, so <clears throat> those would be the ones that would be quick, easy, and inexpensive. Pipe dreams. Will I ever get to go there? I don't know. I would say probably Europe, definitely. I would like to do a Euro tour through like maybe Great Britain, France, Italy, maybe Germany. Shit, he's gonna get maybe, lost, dude. Um, oh god, what was the fifth one that I wanted to do? Ha <laughs> Can't even think of where he wanted to go. Um, uh, don't do that, Phil. You'll get lost. You won't know where the fuck you're going. Um, because he wants to go visit Be Awesome one. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Everybody, all the sociopaths live in uh, in the in uh, in Europe. <laughs> um, don't do it, dude. You'll get lost. Uh, you can't even, you know, you don't even know where the fuck you know that shit is on the on the fucking map. So, chill the fuck out. When is Jackie gonna get a cowboy hat? In a couple seconds. Maybe Spain. Something like Spain. that. Spain. Totally <laughs> like that. Um, I would maybe one day like to go to a tropical island for a vacation. I'm not saying necessarily a certain one. I don't think I would care if it was like Hawaii or one of those other major tropical islands. But that could be a fun one. And, you know, yeah, to some extent, I still do have a desire to go to Japan. At one time when I was younger, I wanted to go to Japan hardcore. I wanted to go and play the best people in Street Fighter. I wanted to take ah! in the Japanese culture. And I wanted to, you know, just experience it. Wow. Now, I'm a lot different. I'm older, and I realize that a Japan trip is incredibly expensive. And you get way less than going anywhere else because Japan, everything is small. You pay the same amount you pay for a hotel room, like a luxury hotel room, giant room with a spa and everything at like a luxury resort in the United States. You pay that for a little rinky dink hotel room the size of a closet in Japan. So everything is smaller. So I don't know. Like, I don't know. Maybe I would like to be there just to see it. But I honestly think I'd probably have more fun going somewhere else. Back to Connecticut. So there you go. Those are the, the vacation places that I would probably consider. And or would like to go. He needs Will a I ever get to go hotel. there? Who knows at this point. Um, <clears throat> let's see here. 
<clears throat> GSP ever went to fucking Japan, he'd be the biggest I thing there. Place. Oh, here we go. From Derek Legends 26. He says, Phil, who in the WWE would you say is your favorite superstar? Who's your, what was your favorite hey, pay-per-view? And what is your favorite WWE commentator? Um, That's a lot of questions. Current favorite WWE superstar. I don't know if there's one that I absolutely like. Oh my God, it's the best ever. Um, I respect hard workers, right? I really don't have respect, respect for those who get pushed workers. just because they're big. Okay? Uh, so for example, right now, Braun fucking Strowman can go suck an egg. The guy's terrible in the ring. He's terrible on the mic. The only reason he's getting a push is because he was born big. He didn't earn his spot. And Vince is pushing the shit out of him because he's huge. Not because he's good. All right? Compare that to someone like a Daniel Bryan or an AJ Styles or um, <clears throat> a Shinsuke Nakamura. Hell, even Samoa Joe. He's chubby for a pro wrestler. But he's one of the most amazing performers out there, right? Kevin Owens. You know, he's a great wrestler. That's why I've always respected people like HBK and Chris Jericho. Because they're not huge, giant, roided freaks, but they got themselves over with their own talents, right? Um, <laughs> roided so freaks. So today, I don't know. I really don't. I, when I watch wrestling, I try not to play favorites. I'll be honest, for the years when CM Punk was there, he was my guy. He was. But once he left... I kind of didn't really have a favorite anymore. I kind of lost the idea of a favorite wrestler. <laughs> Sam Punk? Um, what was my favorite pay-per-view? Dude, he loves sucking Sam Punk's dick. There have been a lot of good ones. Um, you know, ones that come to mind, I have to say the Armageddon Hell in a Cell pay-per-view from 2000. Um, had That was one of the craziest matches ever. There was so much going on in that match, six-man Hell in a Cell, that the cameramen were running around trying to catch all the action and couldn't even get it. That was like the epitome of, holy shit, what can you do in one of these crazy matches? Um, the Royal Rumble is always fun, in particular when you have no idea who's going to win. Like this year, I really liked the Royal Rumble match because you had no idea who was going to win, and then you, know, you see who wins. You're like, holy shit, you never expected that guy, right? Um, so in that regard, the Royal Rumble always has that air of mis uh, mystery when they don't fucking spoil it with bullshit. Like, oh, someone's title is on the line. Obviously, they're gonna fucking win then. Oh. They've been pushing the living shit out of this guy, and he claims he's going to get into WrestleMania. Obviously, he's going to win the Rumble then. You know what I mean? So, I hate those years when it's super predictable, or when, like, for example, Oh, Batista fucking comes back out of obscurity and wins the Royal Rumble. He's going to WrestleMania. Stupid shit like that pisses me off. Um, Obviously, WrestleMania every year. I don't think I have, again... I hate it when people say, what's your favorite? I don't really have... I, there's things that I like, but it's not... Thing, I, this is my favorite of all time. It's very hard for me to put my finger on it. Commentator, definitely, I would say, if you're play-by-play, it's got to be JR. I mean, he's always been the best play-by-play -play commentator. There's other guys who are coming up that are doing pretty good. Snore it. I would say color commentator, either Jerry the King Lawler, or I would have to say JBL right now, I like, but he kind of screws up a lot, too. Um... Corey Graves is doing a good job. Corey Graves, I'm very impressed with Corey Graves on the mic when it comes to his NXT commentary. Now that he's on Raw, his Raw commentary has stepped up a bit. So I like, that is a, a cool story of a guy who all his life wanted to be a wrestler. The worst possible thing happened where he couldn't wrestle. And now he's finding his own in another venue of wrestling or another avenue of working for a wrestling company. I love, that, that guy I respect a lot. I really do. That's probably one of the more well-respected people in the WWE. Corey Graves, man. All right, let's keep going. Yo, yeah, let's keep going. Oh, my God. This question is so I wish long. I got the hat slider. Quickly. I wanted so to get a hat that was like, like Clint Eastwood type, but it kind of like goes up a little bit I have no more. idea how to pronounce that. Clint Eastwood's hat is, is like flat I've been meaning to ask you, how do you get paid by Machinima oh, well. through your partnership with them? <clears throat> I always thought you got a flat rate based off of views, and Machinima gets paid whatever YouTube makes on ad revenue. But I noticed a couple of your tweets that you said you're not getting paid off of views, uh, so I'm, I'm confused. I understand if you can't share due to contract clauses, but I think it would be a great thing to share whatever the misconceptions are regarding how you actually make your money. I find it absurd how your channel viewership and interaction can be growing, but your income is dropping. Uh, and a follow-up question, is 2017 the end of YouTube? Do you think another content... Uh, he said it a little wrong. He says, do you think a content creator will, will come up soon to introduce competition? It wouldn't be a creator. It would be a more content hosting service who would be competition for YouTube. Or do you think YouTube will continue to have a stranglehold on the market? Well, I guess, uh, again, I, I 
I apologize, CJ Packing, CJ Packing, maybe is how you say it, um, that you missed out because this happened at the end of 2015. Uh, my contract was always with Machine Cinema since I signed with them in 2011 to the end of 2015 had been based off of views. If I made, or if I earned a certain amount of views, I would make a certain amount of money. Now, this contract at the end of 2015 had to go away for two reasons, alright? Number one, because YouTube sucks, and this is not an exaggeration, basically it's publicly admitted repeatedly, they can't keep track of views properly anymore. They don't know how. They constantly fuck up, they overcount, they undercount, they screw everything up. And just recently, this happened in January, YouTube just decided out of nowhere, we're gonna subtr subtract ridiculous amounts of views and subs off of everyone. No warning, no explanation, we're just gonna do it. Now some people noticed it and freaked out and said, oh my god, I just lost like millions of views, what happened? And they contacted YouTube and YouTube said, oh, we audited the system and found out that we overcounted all these views, therefore we subtract all of that, all right? <laughs> Luckily for me, that doesn't happen. For me, uh, I'm not based on that contract on views anymore. That went away in late 2015 and I went to a contract based on ad revenue. The other reason that that contract doesn't exist anymore, all right, is because basically YouTube ad revenue has plummeted. And I'm not exaggerating here. When I started on YouTube in 2011, ads on YouTube were incredibly fucking lucrative. Like, really lucrative. Just running ads on your videos, you could make ridiculous amounts of money. All right? <clears throat> but, over the years, it's declined, 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 declined. Now, that could be many reasons. It could be that YouTube... Excuse me. It could be that ad, uh, advertisers have realized their ads aren't super effective. So why are they going to pay YouTube a ton of money to run? Doesn't this look like a fake hat out of it right? right now? It could be that because there's so many. <laughs> it looks more like I just put an image over my ad face. Revenue enabled looks fake. That all the money can't be divvied out as well as it used to. So now it's it's you know you only had let's say ten thousand people taking the ad revenue. Now you've got ten million. Well, obviously there's going to be far <laughs> less of it, right? Makes sense. Um. I also see there's issues now, but this is really stupid, where ads don't play properly. People have been telling me over the month of January that on a lot of my videos, they'll go to watch the video and they just see black and then the video starts. So obviously they didn't watch the ad, I didn't get credit for it. So... Oh, oh shit, fuck. Oh, fuck. Fucking kidding me. 14, it shows up and I can't stream and record at the same time when Fuck. I'm playing a PC game. It sucks. If ever I magically. From CJPACQUING. I have no idea how to pronounce that. <laughs> He says, Lazy Phil, I've been meaning memes. to ask you, how do you get paid by Machinima through your partnership with I didn't even mean to click I that. I meant to, like, pause the video or something. Uh, again, I, I apologize. CJ basically is publicly admitted repeatedly. They can't keep track of views properly anymore. They don't know how. They constantly fuck up. There's they a... count, they <clears throat> undercount, they screw everything I up. I accidentally clicked just this recently, video. This happened in January. YouTube just decided out of nowhere, we're going to subtr subtract ridiculous amounts of views and subs off of everyone. No warning. No explanation. We're just going to do it. Now, some people noticed it and freaked out. So, oh my God, I just lost like millions of views. What happened? Honest Jackie Chin. That doesn't what? happen. Fuck do I? I don't look I'm fucking honest. I'm not based Amish, on that contract on views. Right? I don't look fucking Amish at all. Fuck. And I went up my hair. to a contract based on I don't look ad Amish at all. The only right? reason that that look good. doesn't exist anymore, all right, okay. is because basically YouTube ad revenue has plummeted. And I'm not exaggerating here. When I started on YouTube in 2011, Ads on YouTube were incredibly fucking lucrative. Like, really lucrative. Just running ads on your videos, you could make ridiculous amounts of money. All right? <clears throat> but, over the years, it's declined, 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 declined. Now, that could be many reasons. It could be that YouTube... I have Adblock on right ad, now. Uh, Adblock, Adblock so only... Their ads aren't super effective. It doesn't seem to work on YouTube Twitch. A ton of money to on YouTube, it works fine. It, right? It could but be on Twitch, it doesn't there's work. There's so many more people out there now putting out videos that are so. ad revenue enabled that all the money can't be divvied out as well as it used to. So now it's, it's you know, you only had, let's say, 10,000 people taking the ad revenue. Now you've got 10 million. Well, obviously, there's going to be far less of it, right? Makes sense. Um, I also see there's issues now. But this is really stupid. I'm just where ads don't play oh, okay. properly. <laughs> people have been telling me over the month of January. Twitch has a deal with that. Yeah. They'll go to watch the video and they just see. That's black, what I was and then told. The video starts. So obviously they didn't watch the ad. I didn't get credit for it. So I didn't get credit for it. They have ad block going. Lead to this ad revenue fluctuating, and that's why 
I don't have the ad or the uh, views based contract anymore. The bottom line is the views based contract at one time, Machina was making a ton of money on ads and I was making a decent amount of money on the views contract because ad revenue plummeted. It flipped. I was making more money with that contract than Machinima was making on ad revenue. So they had to do away with it. They had to get rid of it and do a whole new kind of contract with me. So now, 100% of YouTubers make money on ads. Now there may be other bigger YouTubers that get like bonuses for doing certain things differently, but the base pay everyone receives is based on ad revenue, period. Okay, everyone, there's not one person exempt. Everyone's getting paid based off of ads. I was in the last legacy group of people who still had the view-based contracts, okay? So I am. Everything I do is based on ad revenue. And that's why I can have a month like January where it said, literally it said, you made way more views in January than you did in December. You had higher likes. More people watched and more people were engaged, meaning people were watching my videos for longer in January than they did in December. Oh, by the way, you made thousands of dollars less during that month than you did in December. What? what more views higher engagement more people watching people liked what i did way more in january than december but i made way less money and the reason is because why does he wear that ad fucking revenue. cowboy hat ad revenues in september october november and december skyrocket because all the advertisers are advertising their products for christmas as soon as that wave is done boo, ad revenue goes to the toilet in january it happens every year so for me, I busted my ass in January with this cold, forcing my way through it, trying to make sure I could put, do the, the Dark Souls run for you guys, didn't take any time off, couldn't even afford to go to the fucking doctor, doing all this. Oh, guess what, Phil? You screwed you anyway, because basically YouTube can't do a good enough job of getting advertisers so they could have constant levels of ad revenue all year. Basically, YouTube employees suck. It's their job to bring in the advertisement, and they don't do a good job of it. They've never done a good job of it. They don't have consistent ad revenue. That's fucking stupid. They should have consistent ad revenue, but they're not smart enough to do it. That's lame that people like me and everyone on YouTube who makes content has to take a big hit in January because they're inept at what they fucking do. Stupid. So that's the truth. That's the God's honest truth. That's what's going on. Now, the good news is typically there's certain pockets during the year where there seems to be more. In, I think February because of the Someone Super Bowl, snitched. <laughs> there seems to be a lot more ad revenue on YouTube. So I didn't even, I didn't even think you guys were over here. I think that's April, the, uh, May, I think that's a fire truck. Like a big though. surge in ad revenue. And then Pretty right sure that's a fire the truck. summer, typically there's one. Fire trucks only come around. All of a sudden, in the, the summer, it always slows down from like July to say September. And then you get the big year-end rush. That's going for Jackie Wick. So that's kind of how it works. Thing is, for me, sorry, I can't... I play yeah, I didn't even think you guys stuff. would hear that. Say, that's oh, really funny. I'm going to save all my best stuff for when <laughs> I know the ad revenue is highest. You know what I mean? That's stupid. People want constant entertainment. If I don't give you quality stuff all the time, you're not going to stick around. So for me, I can't. I can't stockpile my videos and content and oh i know there's ad revenue high now so for three months i'll do four times as much content and then do nothing for january unless the I cops are in a fire of, fight, uh, a fire know, fuck flexibility nor do i have that kind of uh, trying to <clears throat> trying to uh, freedom trying to, to do that a lot of people trying may to have stir it, me up trying to confuse me okay uh from vera if you had a more capable pc would you play more pc games uh than console games um, probably not. I do enjoy playing on console mostly because I find it far more comfortable to do this than keyboard mouse. In fact, using keyboard mouse kind of these days hurts my hands. When I did my Twitch and Chill marathon, by the end of the marathon, my hand was hurting me pretty badly. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, in that regard, um, probably not. I do enjoy playing on console mostly because I find it far more comfortable to do this than keyboard mouse in fact using keyboard mouse kind of these days hurts my hands <laughs> i did my twitch and chill marathon by the end of the marathon my hand was hurting me pretty badly okay um, maybe you should stop jerking off um <clears throat> so yeah in that regard i do enjoy consoles more but then again you could use controllers with a lot of these games on pc if my PC could, here's the thing. It's not that my PC can't run games. It's that my PC can't run these games and capture and stream them. 
which I was under the impression when I bought this new PC and I got all the specs according to what people recommended, I'd be able to do it. And then as soon as I got this PC, I go to do it and it didn't work. And everyone blames me. That <laughs> Phil's fault. Because, you know, Phil should have done the research. I did. I, I did. And I bought a $3,000 fucking computer that doesn't do shit. Because I'm an idiot. Listen to what everyone was telling me because I don't know. I don't know anything about the technical aspect of computers anymore. I bought specs directly to what people were telling me to get. I had a panel of people, like 10 people. A panel of people. Who apparently were all in on computers. They told me exactly what to get. I bought this PC in 2014. It shows up and I can't stream and record at the same time when I'm playing a PC game. It sucks. So essentially, essentially, he's blaming the peep, the panel of people. <laughs> you can, you cannot do business with that, with this dude at all, without getting thrown under the bus or shit on because he fucked up. Because he can't do the shit himself. If ever I magically get enough money, which I doubt is ever going to happen at this point, to buy another <laughs> high-end PC, then I'll have one dedicated for gaming and one for the capturing and streaming. I could do it. Right now, I can't. All right. Um. right. Let's see here. We're almost done. Okay. I'm, we are running out of time. There's a couple questions I'm going to skip. I'm going to do one more forum question. Skip? We're running out of time. <laughs> We're running out of time. We're running out of time, dude. We're running out of time, really. So he's going to skip some questions. Fuck you, dude. And then we're going to go to the Twitter questions, all right? So the final forum question of the day is again from Pocho Max. So he had another question. He stuck these are here. these are forum questions. Says, Phil, full hands. What is the one thing you feel they are they are paid questions? Most? He already did that. Eight year history as a YouTube Let's Player and what has helped you or what has helped you the most? So what held me back the most and what helped me the most? I would say what really held me back the most was lack of transparency and in information. Now, there's a lot of times when lack of transparency and information has screwed me over. I'll give you some examples. <clears throat> Not understanding properly how the YouTube copyright system works. Okay? There were a lot of years there where I was totally terrified about false copyright strikes or whatever. I didn't realize what methods I had to defend myself. I didn't realize what vulnerabilities my channels had. Uh, you know, all these copyright issues... So that's one way. Another way, YouTube's lack of transparency. YouTube has never been fully transparent with content creators, ever. They like to pretend like they are. Oh, but didn't you see our obscure blog posts that we didn't tell anyone we were posting up that said that all the algorithms on YouTube would change but didn't really explain fully how they're going to change? Oh, we told you that things were changing. No. YouTube is awful. They need to be more transparent. If they're going to make a change to the site that's going to dramatically affect people's businesses, any content creator, they need to fucking tell us. So He's so fucking lazy. He's like, YouTube's transparent. They don't outright say this shit is going to change or whatever. I'm sure they fucking do. Somewhere. In a place where the, it normally goes. We know what's coming and we can prepare our audiences. If there's going to be a new YouTube algorithm, we need to know exactly how the fuck it works so that we can get our videos to show up in the goddamn algorithm and we can show up in search results. Not just roll the fucking algorithm out there and the next thing you know, someone who used to be super popular on YouTube now can't even show up in the fucking search. It's stupid. It's, it's stupid. Stupid. It doesn't. Stupid. It's stupid out there and the next thing you know someone who used to be super popular on youtube now can't even show up in the fucking search it's stupid it's fucking stupid <laughs> oh shit <laughs> shit stupid 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 Stupid. 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 <laughs> Doesn't he sound like... <laughs>
Clo guys, close your eyes and tell me what cartoon character is is. Please close your eyes and tell me what cartoon character voice this is. Stupid. 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 Church. It's stupid. It's fucking stupid. Stupid. It doesn't. It doesn't. Stupid. Doesn't he sound like Peter Griffin for a little bit? I don't know why. It's like he kind of sounds like Peter Griffin. Doesn't make any fucking sense. Being Again, stupid. Again, lack of transparency. So here's what happened with me with those false copyright strikes. I had all these false copyright strikes coming in. It sounds like something from South Park. And there was a meeting between my my, my partner network Machinima and YouTube about it. And I said there's potential that there's tons of false copyright strikes coming up against my pre-stream videos. YouTube employees told Machinima employees to tell me to delete the videos off of YouTube. Really now? Really? Because... <laughs> really? Really? Because I, I thought I remember Machinima told you to delete the videos. I, ne I don't remember you ever saying uh, that Machinima was told by YouTube who then told you to delete the videos. You said two years ago that Machinima told you to delete the videos. <laughs> Without properly communicating, again, lack of transparency of data, that when I deleted- Didn't he say YouTube told him to delete it first? I remember him saying Machinima told him to delete it first. So, I don't know. That's what I remember. Because that's what he always said. He, he always said, Machinima told me to delete them. Because then Machinima fucked him over and redid this fucking contract negotiation right after uh, the copyright strikes happened and he got fucked over. So... Those videos that would make my channel look as a negative because I lost all those views... And then I would permanently fall out of YouTube search results. <laughs> it's a conspiracy, dude! It's a conspiracy. Please, get your fucking tinfoil hats going, alright? Get your tinfoil hats on. Uh, it's conspiracy time. It's conspiracy mode. With the conspiracy chin, alright? This is conspiracy chin. Brought to you by the SCE Global Annihilation. Alright? Like, come on, dude. Seriously? <laughs> YouTube told Machinima to tell me to delete the videos so that I would fall out of the YouTube search results. They didn't tell me any of that. I didn't know about this until months later when all of a sudden I'm like, why aren't I getting any views on my videos? What happened? Maybe because... Properly communicating, again, lack of transparency of data, that when I deleted those videos, that would make my channel look as a negative because I lost all those views. And then I would quote unquote views permanently fall out of YouTube search results. They didn't tell me any of that. I didn't know about this until months later when all of a sudden I'm like, why aren't I getting any views on my videos? What happened? At the end of the year, I get a boost in views. I've gotten nothing. What happened? And then people behind the scenes figured it out. It's like, <laughs> then people figured it out. He's trying to figure out why his views are lower because he fucking deleted videos. It's common fucking sense. Duh. YouTube just and I want I wonder who the the people were I wonder who these people behind the scenes were I wonder if it was the sons of Kojima uh, detractors any shit like that come on dude sucks it's like a bunch of people <laughs> it's just like I said earlier about my college professor okay my college professor for computer science was incredibly smart incredibly hyper intelligent he could code anything but when it came to actually communicating what he was doing to people he couldn't do it he had no he couldn't be transparent he couldn't teach he couldn't do anything he was terrible same thing with google i i fully believe that the people at youtube and the people at google are book smart they could sit there and they could code and they could do this and they could do that but when it comes to being street smart 
when it comes to being personable, when it comes to communication skills, when it comes to actually applying their know-how, their knowledge to real life business, they have no fucking concept of how to do it. So they just roll everything out constantly, not understanding this is gonna fuck over other YouTubers, this is gonna fuck people over constantly, and we don't care because we're Google and we own it. So who gives a fuck? Yeah. We're infallible. That's kind of their attitude. And it's ridiculous. TSP, they don't give a fuck about you. They don't care. They don't even know you. Who the fuck are you? It's like, who the fuck are you? They don't care about your stupid fucking drama. All right? They don't give a shit. Elitist fucking fucked up attitude that needs to end, but someone has to compete with them, and so far nobody has. <laughs> I'm waiting right now. I'm waiting for what is their competitor from a few months ago. Um, oh, what competitor, dude? I haven't heard anything about this competitor. You really think somebody's going to be able to rise up against fucking YouTube? What are you, fucking gay? That I registered for to tell me that they're going to have ad revenue. Because right now they don't. There's this other website that's trying to compete with YouTube, but the only way that you make money is people donating to you, basically. I know people are, are already doing Patreon and Twitch stuff. I can't say, oh, there's another avenue to donate. It's ridiculous. So that's the thing. I'm not going to put my videos up. Now they said they're going to get ads eventually. Once they get ads, yeah, I'll probably start putting my videos over there and see what kind of revenue it brings. You know what I mean? <coughs> but right now it's so ridiculous. There is no viable alternative to YouTube. There's no one who's competing with YouTube on us on the level. And we're all stuck with the, these, we're stuck with these hyper intelligent book smart people who don't understand how business really fucking. Seriously, uh, <laughs> this is, this is dumb as fuck. Um, he's talking about how he, uh, it's really funny. Um, <clears throat> he's talking about how, uh, there's a competitor. Uh, somebody's tr gonna try to compete with YouTube or whatever. He signed up, uh, I think it's called VidMe or something like that. Um, he signed up for the site and he's waiting for them to do some sort of ad-based uh, business or whatever. Well, they're not going to get to that point if you don't upload videos to their site. Do you think you... He's like, YouTube would... I don't think YouTube started out as a business where it had, like, fucking ads on every single fucking video. Alright? Yes, it is a vest. It is a vest, my friend. But, like, seriously. Um. They aren't gonna up... They're not gonna get some... What you... What you want. What you want, like, what YouTube is. Um... They are not going to get that because if nobody's uploading videos to their site and waiting for whatever fucking miracle you think is going to happen, um, nothing's going to happen and the site is going to go down uh, into history as being a uh, disappointment. And it probably already is. Uh, have you uploaded any videos to VidMe, Phil, ever? No? Okay, all right. Works. The only reason they're employed is because they're hyper smart and they all have their fucking PhDs from Ivy League schools, but they don't understand the day-to-day -day effects of the shit that they do, the code that they roll out, and the non-transparency that they have. I'm like people, John Wick. If, if all the things, all the changes that YouTube was ever having were transparent to me, I would have changed my business on the fly. I would have changed the way I title things, the way that I use tags, my thumbnails. I would have started doing all these things, but it was never fucking transparent. Yeah. So I never knew any changes were coming through the pipeline. Then all of a sudden, they would hit, and you're like, well, all my views are down again. Oh, not in search again. Wow, this is a great fucking thing, right? I just uh, I'm disgusted. Um, what <laughs> has helped me the most over the years with my business? I mean, how can you even question it? The viewers and the fans. The constant feedback. The positivity. The fact that no okay. matter what right. happens. Okay. I want to go back. With my business, 
Listen to his voice, guys. Listen to his voice. It changes. Listen to his voice. But it was never fucking transparent. So I never knew any changes were coming through the pipeline. Then all of a sudden, they would hit. And you're like, well, all my views are down again. Oh, not in search again. Wow, this is a great fucking thing, right? I just... Uh, I'm disgusted. Um, What has helped me the most over the years with my business? I mean, how can you even question it the viewers and the fans the viewers and the fans i mean come on they're so positive they give they give very good feedback okay but fuck youtube he has this he has this uh cock sucking voice uh that you know he's 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 kissing up to people it's his it's his little Little PR, little PR voice. His bullshit PR voice, by the way. So, the constant feedback, the positivity, the fact that no matter what happens, no matter how much negative shit gets thrown my way, that the people come back, right? If I didn't have a dedicated group of viewers who really want to see me succeed and keep me doing this, I wouldn't still be doing it, you know? Um, <laughs> it's hilarious because I don't think that the, the negative people realize how much. The fact that they exist and tell me that I can't succeed motivates me even more to keep going for those people. It makes me stronger! More motivated to work! <laughs> Negative people. <laughs> oh, shit. <clears throat> that are still here and want to see me succeed you know what i mean no because you're whining and whining and whining about not having enough views about stupid fucking shit that happens to you you're not motivated you're begging for money like they don't get it they just look oh i get it dude i get it you're motivated dude you're motivated to fuck people over who don't know any better. Keep making hateful videos. Let's keep doing this. So every time you do that, you're just reinvigorating me to keep fucking going. Like seriously, for every false copyright strike I get, that gives me the fucking burn in my fucking body, the, the drive to keep going and succeed past that. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> Thank you, because in the past day, I'll tell you, the past day, so I kind basically of a DSP uh, reached a, out yes, yesterday, and I was very honest with everyone regarding the past two months, saying that I don't know what's going on, whether it's a YouTube issue, whether something happened, but, you know, regarding the fact that my business hasn't been doing too well the past two months, that I've seen a sharp decline in views, and this happened last year after the summer and he's motivated again this guys. year and i don't know what's going on i don't know what's causing it no one can seem to give me a concrete answer uh but the fact that if this is going to continue to happen but you want to continue to see me do this full time that you not only could you know continue to watch the videos but you know patreon is the way to go and uh you know yesterday i kind of emphasized that you know it's not about uh, people giving motivated. giant amounts of money to me that's not what it is it's, it's not what I'm, I'm here to do to sit here and an eBay constantly and ask you please send me a hundred dollars no oh. it's about everyone who watches my stuff you know contributing maybe a buck if everyone who watched my, my videos and enjoyed my gameplay streams and my gameplay videos and my reviews and my vlogs on YouTube gave a dollar a month I wouldn't have to ever worry about even getting a single view seriously it would be more than enough to support the business and I get the feeling with all these changes coming YouTube Red which just launched and everyone feeling uncertain about if they're ever going to make any, any any kind of ad revenue or whatever from YouTube Red now having no ads on YouTube and stuff. That I hate to say it, but it's going to be fan funding that really seems like it's going to keep people like me able to do this as an occupation. It's not going to be ad revenue anymore. It's not going to be partnership contracts. It's going to be fan funding that's going to make all this possible. So anyway, the reason I'm bringing this up, yesterday I mentioned this. Yeah, like any time he mentions streams, copyright I want to say there's been a, a large ever. group of people who did, for the first time, uh, pledge to my Patreon at patreon.com forward slash darksidephil. And I want to say thank you for that. If you were one of those people, that's freaking awesome. And I can tell you right now, 
we are pretty damned close to hitting my goal level for October and being able to do this upcoming rockathon, which I would like to do. All right, uh, a rockathon marathon of Rock Band Four. Uh, we're we're right we're kind of right along there on the goal level, but I get the feeling that there are going to be a few more people who this last minute are going to be reducing their larger pledges from last month, which always happens. And typically, we always get about a dozen to twenty people who get declined. And not that that's a big deal, you know. Well, most of those people are, are usually dollar pledges, but still, it could fall off and we could not hit the goal. So I just want to let everyone know, we're very close to hitting the goal for October. Thank you very much to those of you who did for the first time step up and pledge. I really do appreciate that. If you haven't yet, consider it. And obviously, I'd like to keep that up and keep doing things. This is, is just as dangerous as someone putting a gun in my face. Because if I can't pay my bills, if I get my house fucking, you know, foreclosed on, because I can't, can't, all right? And all this shit should go at this point with everything being so uncertain with how YouTube's going to continue, right? View declines and YouTube red and all this shit coming up out of nowhere. Uh, you know, Patreon is the way to support and make sure that I can keep doing this. So if you like my stuff, consider it, all right? That's all I ask. Just consider it. Well, what happened today is just as dangerous as someone putting a gun in my face. Because if I can't pay my bills... If I get my house fucking, you know, foreclosed on because I can't stream or do videos anymore, which is what my job is, that's just as threatening as someone putting a gun in my face. So you have threatened my life, you've threatened my livelihood, and it's just as fucking bad as being swatted. So now, let's talk turkey. Because the person who did this to me, all right, where is he? Where is he? That's not it. That's not it. Here it is. Be awesome one. All right. He, of course, will say, I never posted that on Phil's forums. That wasn't me. No, that wasn't me. It wasn't me. I have proof it's him, which I'm going to show you in a moment. But he said, no, it wasn't me. You can't pin this That's on shit you know, this some kind of conspiracy <laughs> from his detractor groups. This is a piece of artwork I, I found and I, I made in May, and Phil's been using this to make money for months, so I'm just going to claim my copyright on it. First of all, <laughs> be awesome, one, whoever you fucking are. You don't have legal claim to it because it's my face. It's a rip from my video. Nothing you did putting a box art of The Witcher pushing my face made it a transformative work. It's my legal property I don't have copyright on it you have no copyright claim on it the only reason that youtube even put up with your fucking nonsense is because it's an automated system and there's no people who work there basically doing it it's all robots so congratulations you found a way to game the system you're a sociopath but now he's claiming right now it wasn't him i wasn't me that did this on YouTube, on, on uh, excuse me, on the King of Hate vlogs. It wasn't me, right? It wasn't me. You can't prove it was me. I did submit the copyright claim, but I never put that picture up on the King of Hate uh, website. Oh, yeah? Well, let me show you something. That's the copyright claim from Be Awesome One. That is the original post. Notice the name, Stevie Ray. Guess what? This guy is such a genius that he's posted on my website under the same IP multiple times. In fact, all of these accounts that you see on the, the uh, right-hand side of your screen right now are the same person. Oh, gee, does that top account look a little familiar? Be awesome one. And yeah, he's also done all these other accounts over the past year, every single one of which was a troll account, trolling myself and other people on my website. <laughs> if you need proof he's a sociopath, he created seven accounts different accounts to troll people on my website. Now you may say, but that's not definitive proof. Of course it's not. But how about the fact that his fucking Twitter account is the same exact avatar that he's fucking using for this troll account on my website? Oh, by the way, I have, I have your, your IP, IP I, I have, have your name, name and, and I, I have your address. address. So, so, congratulations. You, you fucked up. up. You, you really, really did be, be awesome, awesome one, one on, Twitter. on Twitter. I have all your fucking personal information. Now, I'm going to say this up front. Right. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to give it out. I'm not going to give it out. out. This is not a doxing not video. A doxing I do not video. Video. I will I cannot, never give out someone's personal I'll information or anything give out like anybody's that personal information. However, understand Hello. something. <clears throat> I got I got you. So, so you're, in, you're trouble. in trouble. If I hired a lawyer right now, I could sue you. I could sue you. False copyright. False copyright. Defamation. defamation. I, I have, have evidence of everything. everything. You're, You're lucky, lucky that I'm busy. busy. You're lucky <laughs> that I don't have unlimited funds. You're lucky <laughs> I'm not poor as fuck. <laughs> After you. You're lucky because I could if I wanted to. Well, 
Tevin was really pissed off at that moment. Because if I remember, uh, uh, Leanna, this motherfucker's girlfriend, was threatening to dox uh, Tevin. So Tevin was really fucking pissed. Uh, I would be too, by the way. That's fucking bullshit. Uh, so yeah. You fucked up. Oh, wait, fuck. Shit. Wait, who's this? Fred Fox? Fred Fox? So I'm working at it, and all of a sudden, you know, Watch the I'm, gun, I'm dude. trying to People have been banned for whatever, because I just want to play the games and not be like okay. bummed out or affected by the fact that views might look low or whatever. Oh yeah, and Leanna now, did a copyright low, strike like, on him. Insane. Then I think so I she was this, threatening this, to this dox him or something like from that. this guy saying, "I ha I know why your views Watch are out low with for the, the gun, past dude. two months, and you're not gonna like." Oh no! He says, "Well, you remember." Oh no! In August, you deleted all of your pre-streams. You deleted all of. I'll just make a new fucking channel. That's fine with me. Your channel lost two million views. He says. This is how YouTube works. Now listen to how fucking stupid this is. From Ivy League employees at Twitch Google, streamers so banned brainy, some Asian right? dude. To be smart. Had a fake gun and got banned. When you delete a video, yeah, on, on it Twitch. takes away views from your channel. YouTube. I'll just, I'll just. It's not a big deal, based on dude. How many views it really they bring isn't. In on a this is like basis, my second channel, and anyways. And based off so. of that rank, they actually prioritize. Don't ban me though, Capstone. Put channels in Please. order, dependent on how you're going to get ranked in searches, how your videos will show up in related videos, the chances that your video will show up as a highlight somewhere on YouTube. All right. So, typically every month, I make about three million views. Three million views is pretty good. And I've been around since 2008. This channel in particular, DSP Gaming, has been around since 2010. So the fact that my channel's been around for over five years, bring, has a still, secret, still bringing millions of views a month, in it? I was actually pretty high up See, in the this rankings is where you put and the your priority marijuana for gaming channels on YouTube. Forever, and and you I can, got some pretty just, good search results. If you search hit for, it up uh, or whatever when you're, when you're out, out in the field and just be like, you know, super I would show up maybe zoned. in the top 50 right? or so people zoned. playing the game. And I'm, of course, it's always random. It all depends on how many views individually you got on your videos. It depends also on how long your videos are. Yes, it's called engagement and it has no fucking... Who cares if you watched a 5-minute video or a 30-minute <laughs> video that the 30-minute video gets rated higher and it does. That's how YouTube works right now. The 30-minute video gets rated higher than the 5-minute video because it's longer. Makes no fucking sense. But again, the Brainiacs, how many people have tried to stop me? Think about it. How many sh how many things have been thrown against me, right? Live stream I'm posting swatting, it on, on Twitter. Full copyright strikes out the wazoo. DDoS attack. I've had physical threats, death it's, threats, it's, both in person, It's a by fucking the way, BB gun, virtually. guys. I've had both. Um, I've had, I've been doxxed. It's I, not a live gun, right? Doxed, this is the CO2 container thing. All the it's a CO2 BB gun. Years. Um, my revenue is tanked. You know, I barely make it ends meet, but you know what? I'm still fucking here, starting year nine because I won't get and up. and like there's no magazine. This is actually where the magazine goes right here. Fuck it's you. a little I'm piece of shit. But... You. And I am here. I'll just make another fucking the long -term video. Support. So. Of those or another channel if, if I get banned. To keep going. That's why I'm still here. It's not that big of a deal. All right. Now for four Twitter questions, and then we'll wrap it up. First one is from Gl Glitch Craze. He says, what game are you looking forward to most this month and why? Well, we've got four major releases in February. We've got Neo, For Honor, Sniper Elite 4, and Horizon Zero Dawn. Out of all those, I've played Neo's beta or alpha or whatever it was, and I played For Honor both in the alpha and the beta phase. Snort. Honestly, I like For Honor, but am I expecting anything more groundbreaking than what I played in the beta or the alpha? No. I think it'll be fun to play, but I don't think it's going to be anything that's going to be like, wow, now. it's so different and amazing or anything like that. I think we've kind of maybe seen the extent of what that game's going to be. Maybe I'm wrong, but I think we might have. I'm going to skip that question. Okay, from PJ Marley. He says, Phil, how do you transition from living with your parents to living on your own? What are the best ways to handle this, and do you have any advice? Well, there's basically a few things you're going to have to do that, you know, you didn't have to do when you live with your parents. You got to realize when you live it by yourself, <clears throat> number one, security. So doors locked at all times, security system. Do you need a weapon for self-defense? I guess it depends on where you live, right? Um, you're going to be by yourself. You're not going to have the extra layer of other people around you to help protect you or anything like that. So you got to be careful about that. Number two, meals. And this is going to be the hardest thing. If you live with your parents, your parents were always cooking you meals, and all of a sudden, oh shit, either I have to cook for myself or buy food, you gotta try to balance, because if you do like I did, 
When I had that office job and I was so overweight, that is so terrible for you. You got to find a balance of maybe if you get some healthy meals you can cook for yourself. Balance that with the, the, the splurging meals of eating out or whatever. Don't just eat a million fatty, disgusting meals and have no limitation on what you eat because you will be terrible within a year, okay? Um, responsibility. And what I mean by that is, do you remember when you lived with your parents and you overslept? They couldn't wake you up? It ain't gonna happen no more. It's not. You gotta get, like, I got, I actually got a better alarm clock when I moved out. A better alarm clock than I ever had. Because <clears throat> I knew it needed to wake me up. So I got one that has two alarms. So I can set one for earlier and one for later. So if I sleep through the first one, the later one will wake me up. It's loud as shit. So that's the kind of stuff. There's people who, like, can't even get out of bed by themselves. That's ridiculous. You, you have to train yourself to have that self-discipline. Not only to wake up, but to go to sleep, too. A lot of people, oh... Uh, my, uh, there's no one here to wake up at night anymore. My parents don't yell at me when I stay up. I can stay up all night. Great, but you got to get up in the morning, right? To go to school or work or whatever it is. So you got to be more responsible there. You know, it's going to be a lot of challenges to do the right things when you don't have someone constantly looking over your shoulder, making sure you're doing them. It's going to be a lot of discipline, but you got to do it because if you don't, there are people who flub through life and never do it. And these are the people who can't hold a job. These are the people who are constant failures. They're not dependable. You know, the people who are the moochers, who, you know, everyone has that cousin who is the guy, the deadbeat. He's like, oh God, that guy again, he's going to come over. He's going to ask for, to borrow money from me. And, you know, then he's going to go blow it on something stupid like liquor or, or, or boo, you know, drugs or something dumb. And he never holds down a job, even though he had a chance to have a million good ones. The fucker can't get up in the morning. <coughs> it's a bad situation. It's See, it's moments like this where Phil says the most ironic things ever. Things that describe him, and that's why I think he's a fucking character. I don't think this dude's for real because of shit like this. Shit he fucking says, like, like oh, deadbeat guy, you know. Oh, he's gonna come over and borrow money, and you can't. He, even though he had, he's had a million fucking chances to get a job, he hasn't got one. Like, oh, don't be like that. You gotta toughen yourself up and basically make a checklist of all the stuff you're gonna do that's different from when you live with your parents, and commit to it. Okay. Uh, next question. From Dark Zero Knight, could you have any? If you could have any superpower, which one would you want? It could come from anyone that's a superhero, video game, or anime. Or it's anime. very simple. Right now, I definitely know. If I could have any superpower, I'd love to clone myself. Because oh my god, I would fucking go to war. All right, who's with me, guys? Who the fuck is with me? All right, who would go to war if this motherfucker was cloning himself? Cause I would. I would fucking go to war. All right. I would, I would go to war. I would go to war. I would really go to war. All right? You just have a bunch of lazy fucks. <laughs> I could clone myself. Then one person could be here full time all day playing games raw and streaming them and having fun with the commentary. One person could be reviewing the games and doing that kind of... DSP Wars, Attack of the Clones, yeah. <laughs> the content. One person could be making montages of all the playthroughs, and one person could be doing fun and informed vlogs. See, this is how, this is how lonely DSP is. This is how many friends DSP has. He's so fucking, like... To be honest, this... It, <clears throat> he's a really fucking, yeah, narcissistic fuck. He's a narcissistic fuck with no friends. This is what happens when you don't have friends. You have to fucking clone yourself because you can't do all this shit. <laughs> so you can have a fucking team of, of specialized uh, f narcissistic fucks to help you out with your video. The problem is I'm one person. And it's hilarious because in the month of January, this was perfect example. In the month of January, uh, said, I no, I'm sick, not looking at the YouTube. But chat I was right playing now. through Dark Souls, right? And a bunch of gaming news and stuff happened all at once. And people literally 
within the span of one day said to me, Phil, why didn't you play more on stream? We are number why aren't one you doing an ongoing idea. montage of Dark Souls? And why didn't you do a launch video uh, for the announcement of the Nintendo Switch? Why didn't you have a commentary video? Because everyone on YouTube does edited style gameplay videos, so you should do it. But by the way, you should still keep playing the game raw every day. By the way, everyone on YouTube did a Switch reactions video besides you. And I'm like, do you not understand? I'm one man. Like, seriously. I'm one dude. I have... 10 hours a day, roughly, that I could probably use for business because I sleep six to eight hours a day. And then the other, you know, four hours that are remaining there or whatever are usually for household things. Waking up in the morning, taking a shower, eating, cleaning up the house, having an hour or two of relaxation in between or time to spend with my girlfriend. I don't have an infinite amount of time and resources and also energy. That's negative, the negative, thing. negative, 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 negative. Oh my God. Oh my God. <laughs> oh my goodness. To break from this. Um. <laughs> negative, oh, negative, 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 oh negative, God. negative, 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 <laughs> DSP's loop of negativity. <laughs> oh my god. Negative 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 <laughs> That's great, though. That's just fucking great. If I could clone myself, so one fill per job, I mean, it would be amazing. But, you know, ideally what would have happened was, kind of like if you think about SSOH, PKC, and the creatures. A bunch of like-minded people who all make different kinds of video content, they came together to be a group, and they all supported each other and helped each other out with all the Where's the 10 hour stuff. version so it though? It always just they're all individuals who need to do all the work. It was they would all work together, right? If I had had a team like that, that would have been negative, 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 neg
negative, 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 negative,
security system? Do you need a weapon for self, 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 for self? So you gotta be more, gotta be more, a lot, do a lot, outish, outish, than I ever had, because I knew. are usually for household things. Wake up in the morning, taking a shower, or I don't have infinite energy where I could just go on and on and on and never have to, never be tired and never need a break from this. Um, if I could click, I could click. Uh, next question uh -huh. from Dark Zero. Right, the last question from Project X Payday. Why don't you keep and collect your video games like you do your Blu-ray movies? That's a really easy answer. Two reasons. Number one. Because unlike a movie, which is, oh, a couple hours, you could come back and watch it quick and you're done and it's cool to come back to it. A video game is usually a longer interactive experience. I probably would never want to go back, for example, and say, oh, man, I'm just craving to play Mass Effect 3 again. Another 10 to 15 hour playthrough here, playing it in my casual time. Probably never, you know. There may be games that from time to time I do want to go back and play, but... For the most part, I don't what get that games? craving. For me, I play the game, I enjoy it that first time, and I never really want to go back. The exception would be like with Dark Souls. I wanted to go back and do the Redemption run because the first run was so shitty. But for most games, that the so time the that I'm going to play it is the first time. The and I never really feel a desire to go back and replay the game. So why save the game, right? Fuck and when I rewatch a movie, that movie never changes. Me watching it, you know, original time versus the 10, 20 times after... It's not like the movie changed, right? And also, it's short. It's not super time-consuming. While when I'm doing a video game, it's very time-consuming, right? So that's kind of the difference. Um, also, let's face it, Blu-ray movies, they don't have a lot of trade-in value. If I were to trade in all my Blu-rays downstairs, I'd probably make 100 bucks. Versus games, a lot of the times when you buy them new, you trade them in, you can get half the value back, usually, okay? But now, really, the biggest reason... I don't really buy physical games anymore. I stopped last year when Leanna started going to work and needing the car all the time. And I realized, damn, I'm not going to have that flexibility anymore to either be there that midnight launch to get the physical game or to be there Tuesday morning to get the game because she's going to need the car to work. I stopped getting them physically. And I really have not. The last physical game I bought was in April of 2016. It was Star Fox Zero. And I haven't gotten one since. Yeah, I haven't gotten one since. I'm thinking Pocket Tournament right there was March of last year. And that's it. So, I, you know, the only exceptions were 3DS. I bought uh, uh, Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time on 3DS because it was really cheap online versus getting it digitally. So, but that's why I don't have a big game collection. I don't think I ever have a desire to go back. That first playthrough usually is the definitive playthrough for me. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for watching Ask the King. I hope you enjoyed the show. The next show will be in two months' time, sometime in April. I'm not exactly sure when yet. Again, you could post up your questions already on the geekofhake.com forums. Or, if you pledge to my Patreon, you could guarantee that your questions will be answered. All right? Thank you, everyone, for watching. I'll see you I next think, time. I think, and he just mentioned this. He doesn't buy games, uh, physical copies. Um, he buys them all digitally. You can't trade in digital games. So how much more money is DSP losing from buying all these games digitally? He needs to stop buying games digitally then. If he's if he's tight on money and shit like that, stop buying games digitally, okay? You need to buy games physically. That way, if you want to trade it in, you can get money back. Seriously, what a fucking idiot. Oh shit. The King, until then, peace out, and I hope you enjoy all the gameplay content and stuff that I'll be putting out on all of my channels on YouTube. Thanks for watching, and thanks so much once again. You should stop buying support. games only and work on that backlog. Yeah. Keep the fun stuff coming. All right. That's it, everyone. Peace out. Finally. Thank God. We finally finished it, dudes.